as well as the public, please rise for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. The invocation this evening will be offered by my guest, Bishop Jerry Maynard, Sr. God eternal, we're thankful for the opportunity to come to represent the people of Nashville. We have come with wisdom and knowledge and understanding and also for a love for Davidson County and a commitment to this county and the people therein. Bless the decisions that are discussed and reached in this house and bless this council and the vice mayor and all of the attendees, we pray, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Without objection, we will suspend the calling of the roll and ask the clerk to record the names of those members present throughout the meeting. Is there a motion for the adoption of the minutes of the meeting of August 21st, 2018? Without objection, the minutes of the meeting will stand approved as written. We are now going to move to bills on public hearing. So we're happy to hear from the public and each one of you will be allocated a maximum of three minutes to speak. We do ask that you try to refrain from repetition. Once you have spoken, please do us the honor of leaving so that the people that are out of the mezzanine that also want to speak can come in, if you don't mind. So, BL 2018-1290, Council Member Sledge. Thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. Um, do we need to read the caption? I'm for going okay. to. Changes 10.0 acres from IWD to SP zoning for property located at 300 Rains Avenue to permit a mixed-use development. Council Member Sledge. Thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. I'd ask that we open the public hearing. A very brief comment. I thank everybody who's here tonight. I would ask uh, the members of the public, both for and against, if possible, when they're speaking, um, there are residents here of District 17, as this is a rezoning bill. If it's possible to get them as close to the front of the line, the respective lines as possible, I would greatly appreciate it. And with that, I renew my request to open the public hearing. Thank you. I'd like you to please raise your hand if you are in support. Thank you. Please raise your hand if you're in opposition. Thank you. Anyone in support wishing to speak, please line up at the lectern. And if you would, come as close to the front as you can and save the time walking up. You can go ahead and begin. Good evening, Vice Mayor, members of Metro Council. I'm Laura Womack, Executive Director of the Fairgrounds, and I'm here as applicant for the request you have before you to rezone 10 acres of property located at 300 Rains. This past May, along with Nashville Civic Design Center, we continued public engagement by hosting a series of workshops and design studios. Through those efforts, we gathered input that contributed to a refined site plan for Fair Board consideration. In June, the Fair Board voted unanimously to, uh, to approve that site plan. Most recently, the Fair Board approved unanimously ground leases with the Sports Authority for the stadium and with Walsh Development for the 10-acre mixed-use development. We have spent a considerable amount of time since the council vote in November meeting with stakeholders and design team members to review our current programming and establish goals for the potential new construction. Those goals 
were to have comparable square footage of space, design facilities that can be multifunctional and have the ability to transition efficiently, improve the accessibility and functionality of the site, including ADA, on-site wayfinding, ingress and egress, and to future-proof the site so we're not limited on what we can offer in the future by today's design. Needless to say, there are many opinions on how we accomplish these goals. We have a solid base of information and ideas from our own benchmark industry trends and stakeholder input and we will continue to refine them and consider operations and logistics with our users. While we have attempted to consider every scenario for this shared site, we know that new events will be proposed, that new partnerships will be established, and we will adjust. The Fairgrounds has a strong team of dedicated professionals that are committed to working as a team to serve our customers, business partners, and our Nashville community. To that end, we have established a user advisory committee that has participants representing the flea market, speedway, state fair, large-scale consumer shows, small-scale trade and exposition events, emerging events, indoor sports, neighbors, and friends of the fairgrounds. This group will continue to meet and engage with fairgrounds staff, design team, and our partners throughout the improvement phase and construction of the stadium. It represents an ongoing commitment to open dialogue and a free exchange of ideas and feedback. Another significant consideration relating to the 10 acres of mixed-use development is the additional revenue to the fairgrounds rounds through a property tax split and lease payments. In total, this revenue could increase our budget by roughly 50%. While this funding will be incredibly useful for operational support, we fully commit to funding our reserve to a sufficient and responsible level to ensure long-term capital and major maintenance needs are met. The Fair Board challenged the team to reconsider the terms that were originally presented, and the result was clearly in the fairgrounds' favor by over $16 million over the term of the lease. I want to thank you for your continued support of the fairgrounds and your consideration of this request. Thank you. Before you speak, Kim, would you guys on the left-hand side that are standing in the window please find a seat? We only want people that are standing up to line up at the lectern. Thank you so much. The floor is yours. Good evening, I'm Kim Hawkins with Hawkins Partners Landscape Architects. I'm here tonight as we are a part of the Fairgrounds Master Plan Team, Expo, and Fair Park. We have prepared some exhibits that you have in your council packet tonight, and I wanted to go through a couple of those um, regarding two items that we've continued to have questions about. They are the flea market existing and proposed square footages, as well as flea market existing and proposed parking. And I do apologize, but I'm gonna be running through a lot of numbers. Um, all of the exhibits that you see in your packet related to this are based on the April, 14, April 2014 aerial, which was the day of a flea market, typically the highest volume flea market of the year. We currently have 120, 919 square feet of conditioned space 108,124 square feet of covered outdoor space and 205,603 square feet of uncovered exhibit space. That totals 9.98 acres. That's existing prior to the Fair Park being under construction. The proposed expo and event layout includes 132,491 square feet of conditioned space 100,348 square feet of covered outdoor space and 254,826,000 square feet of uncovered exhibit space. I say that because the differential between the two I think is important. The proposed flea market and expo provides an additional 11,572 square feet of conditioned space reduces the covered outdoor space by 7,776,000 square feet for a net gain of 3,796 square feet. The uncovered exhibit space adds an additional 1.13 acres. Therefore, the total land area or occupied by those spaces is 11.2 acres compared to the existing 9.98. Related to parking, 
Uh, again, 2014, prior to the Fair Park under construction, there were 4,089 existing available flea market parking spaces. 547 spaces were also uh, in existence. Those were within the floodway and buffers. Those will no longer be available after construction is complete. So total of 4,636 existing spaces, 547 of which will no longer be available after construction. The improvement plan includes 4,994 spaces. That's an additional 358 spaces. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Good evening, Vice Mayor. Yes. We've been counting. Okay. Well, we have 27. Now your quorum's 21. I'm, I'm sorry, 27. <laughs> I can't count. We can proceed with the public hearing. We'll need a full quorum before we can conduct a vote uh, by the body, but. Russ just got in. Two in there. There's one more right there. 25. Is there anybody else have one more? She won't come in. I told her. Can you get your, can you turn me off? That's great. It was <laughs> better. Okay, we have 26. We can continue with the public hearing. The floor is yours. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Members of Council, my name is Dan Barge. I'm a civil engineer with Barge Cawthon and Associates, and we're the civil engineer for the projects at the, the fairgrounds. Um, I would like to speak tonight specifically about Metro stormwater regulations and, and um, the effect that those regulations have on the development of the fairgrounds property. Um, first, as everybody knows, there is a FEMA-designated floodplain on the fairgrounds property associated with B Browns Creek. There's a 500-year floodplain and a 100-year floodplain. In Metro Nashville, there's no prohibition against development in the 500-year floodplain. There are no stormwater regulations um, pertaining to the 500-year. Rather, it's the 100-year uh, floodplain that is, is regulated in Metro. Um, there are certain criteria that a project must meet. Um, for example, the finished floor has to be elevated one foot out of the floodplain. If that requires your site to be filled, um, within that parcel, the cut and fill has to balance, meaning if you're building the building side up for your building, you're going to lower the parking lot or somewhere else on that parcel. Um, this is done by, by a three-dimensional grading model. We get a very accurate survey, 
We um, go through different iterations and eventually we submit it to Metro stormwater staff for their review and approval. Um, within the 100-year floodplain, there is a zone called the floodway. Um, and, and associated with the floodway, there is a 75-foot water quality buffer outside of the floodway. In Metro, the floodway is a no development zone um, under, with few exceptions. You can build a bridge across the floodway with proper modeling and occasionally utility crossings. Um, no building or parking is required, is, is allowed in the, in the floodway or in the floodway buffer um, and only very limited improvements are allowed in the buffer, such as greenways and parks. There are no floodplains, floodways, or buffers associated with the mixed-use component of, of this, this project. It is the site where the future expo is being proposed that has floodplain, floodway, and floodway buffers. And the design and the construction of that site will observe the, st the floodway, stay out of the floodway, and the floodway buffers, and will be in strict compliance with all of Metro's stormwater regulations. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening, Vice Mayor, members of the council. My name is Hunter G. with Smith G. Studio, uh, 209 10th Avenue South. We are the applicants for the proposed SP rezoning on behalf of Nashville Soccer Holdings and Metro. <clears throat> We've been working with Laura and her design team to develop the overall plan for the fairgrounds. Our role has been specifically related to the 10 acres of mixed-use development, though the plan is the result of a truly collaborative effort and an intentional and transparent public process. The 2017 Council Resolution called for 10 acres of mixed-use development using specific plan zoning. That's why we're here today. The boundary of the mixed-use development is shown on the Fairgrounds Improvement Plan that you have in your packet we provided, and the legal description has been added to the ground lease, which we'll be discussing next week. As you know, the Planning Commission voted unanimously to approve the community plan amendment calling for a mixed-use community center at the fairgrounds, and they recommended approval of the rezoning to this body. For years, the fairgrounds has been characterized by acres of asphalt and no sidewalks, bi no bike lanes, or, and no curb and gutter. The improvement plan that the Fair Board approved will transform this area into a cohesive, attractive district that will accommodate all current fairgrounds uses and then some. The purpose of the mixed use area is to integrate a vibrant mix of restaurants, retail, hospitality, and residential with the fairgrounds events. This will bring more people to the fairgrounds, enhancing the overall experience and enhancing the neighborhood. Now it's important to understand that the mixed use development has been sited adjacent to existing commercial, commercially zoned properties and in between the neighborhood and the fairgrounds uses. It will serve as a buffer and transition between the intense fairground uses and the neighborhoods and will help bring vitality to the, to the area seven days a week. The new expo buildings and soccer stadium will anchor each end of a new promenade along a series of plazas lined with new storefronts. Together, the promenade and plazas will serve as outdoor vendor space for the flea market and other expo events, as you can see in the packet we provided. The plan provides for a D3 landscape buffer, which is the most dense landscape buffer in the zoning ordinance. The SP requires the development to meet Metro zoning parking regulations, which means enough parking will be provided on the 10 acres to fully serve the mixed use. Approximately 500 of those parking spaces will be shared for use during fairgrounds events. We work closely, closely with Councilman Sledge to prohibit nuisance uses, including short-term rental properties. The proposed SP supports Nashville Next's goal of providing walkable neighborhoods, a mix of uses, choices in housing, and concentrated development near transit corridors. Integrating the mixed use in will be great for the fairgrounds. Thank you for your support. Thank you.
Hello, Caleb Hemmer, 6018 Sherwood Court. In addition to being a Nashville native that grew up in the shadows of the fairgrounds off, off Nolensville Pike, uh, I've had the fortunate uh, uh, experience to be on the Metro Fair Board for the last four and a half years and enthusiastically support the plan before you today, uh, mainly because it secures the right to, <clears throat> secures the future of the fairgrounds and all its events for the future, and that's all what we've been working for. Um, it grants what community has been asking for for the, for the last few years specifically, which is a plan to revitalize the site and the facilities. While no plan is perfect, the plan before you uh, is a comprehensive plan. The sum of its parts it, <clears throat> it is what I implore you to support, as the Fair Board did. Uh, I ask you to cut through the noise and, and follow through on the commitment that was made last year. And the simple argument in the whole thing is... Uh, this is a plan that saves the fairgrounds, and we've worked so hard on it, uh, listened to so many community members and stakeholders for the past few months while this uh, process has been uh, unfolding, and so happy to have this plan in front of you today, and again, ask for your support. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is John Ingram, 4400 Harding Road. I live in District 23, and Mina Johnson is my council member. I'd like to start tonight just by really thanking everybody here. It's, this has been a long and some would say arduous process, uh, but I think it's been a very important one. Yes, soccer is a business and it must be sustainable, but I'm here to tell you that above all else, the main reason why I'm leading this project is because I think it's good for Nashville my hometown and I want to do this in Nashville and I want to do it with Nashville and I want to do it for Nashville. Soccer is a unifying sport that is of interest to all parts of our community. This is also a good time to, uh, for all of us to remember that so many good things have happened to make Nashville special and competitive and those have usually taken partnership. And one of the things that, that I believe Nashville does particularly well, has done, to the benefit of all is private-public partnerships, and this is certainly one where the big P is on the private side. To the Nashville community in general, I know that while Nashville has been flourishing, not all communities have shared in these benefits, and that is why we have been so willing and are so thrilled to have come to agreement on a very inclusive community benefits agreement um, with, with Sun this afternoon. And this is a non-token thing. This is, this is a big deal. It sets a great precedent, I think, for our city. Um, and I think it will be worth in excess of $60 million over the term of our lease. And based on kind of some last minute negotiations this afternoon, I think that number will be higher. To the other established users of the fairgrounds, I want each of you to know that we want to be good neighbors. I had the chance to spend a couple of hours last week with Tony and Claire Formosa, got to give them that message directly, and I stand before this uh, council tonight to say that we at soccer support racing, the flea market, and the rest of the uses of the fairgrounds, and we plan to be good neighbors and to be friends. Finally, I am painfully aware that trust is in short supply. Um, I am a Nashvillian, proud to call Nashville my home for over 56 years. Uh, when I give my word, it means everything to me. This is how I was raised. Integrity is essential to me, and it's a hallmark of my family's history. And with all due respect, when you approve this deal, I will personally be responsible to see that we follow through on our commitments, all of them. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Edward George, uh, 9530 Sanctuary Place, uh, Brentwood, Tennessee. Um, I come here tonight as a, a citizen of Nashville. Um, I have been here for well over 20 some odd years. I've played football here. And I've seen firsthand what a uh, sports team can do for a community, uh, both for um, kids coming up, for businesses, uh, for the city itself to generate revenue. Um, I have been supportive of Major League Soccer to Nashville because it is the future of professional sports in the U.S. Uh, there's a few bullet points I'd like to point out of why this project can be so beneficial to, to Nashville. This project is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for Nashville and for the Metro Promise Zone. This rezoning proposal is the key to the stadium project, and I ask you to support it. 
In my career, I've traveled through the world, and soccer, without a question, is the biggest sport on the planet. Given what's happened, happening in our sport in the NFL with concussions and so forth, mothers are putting their kids in soccer, and soccer is generating ex ex extreme revenue across the board uh, nationally. The 10 acres will provide a true fan experience, something necessary to make any professional team, sports team successful. It is also a major opportunity for minority-owned businesses in Nashville, which is a key for black communities. I think it'll be huge for our, for our community. The size and scope of the stadium project will mean more business during the construction phase, and more importantly, once it's operational, so it does not stop. On a social level, soccer is also a multicultural sport that encourages inclusion and diversity. Bringing the MLS to Nashville creates opportunities in soccer for children of color they do not have now. Major League Soccer creates a local uh, youth academies in every one of their markets. Atlanta, if you look to what they're doing, is a perfect example where the team has invested in the sport at the youth level and in the inner city. This project is not good for Nashville, it's great for Nashville, and it's great for our community. I am supporting this project, and I ask for your support too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening, members of the council. My name is Marcus Whitney. I reside at 1810B, Allison Place, District 17, so I'm a resident. And uh, I apologize, I don't have prepared statements. Um, I'm just here to speak from my heart and tell you the story about how I got involved in this and why this is really, really important to me personally. Uh, in 2014, a very small group of people led by a gentleman named Chris Jones, who's here today, uh, decided that Nashville needed to have soccer and that soccer needed to be a community asset. Started a nonprofit organization called Nashville Football Club and invited the, the public to become the owners of a club. We didn't have any players yet. We weren't part of a league yet. It was just to bring soccer to our community and give an, ax an opportunity for all of us to be a part of it. I was member 71 of Nashville Football Club. Within eight months, we did have a team and we were playing in the fourth division of the MPSL. In the second year, I was elected to be the chairman of this amateur club. It was a volunteer position and I had no uh, understanding of how quickly things were going to grow for soccer in this city. Uh, but very soon it became clear to me that professional soccer was going to come here and that we needed to decide, decide whether or not the community was going to have its say in how it ran. And so I had the job of trying to navigate our community-owned club to become an investor-owned club. And that process, even though it's a lot smaller, felt a lot like this. It was about trust. It was about changing something that was a community asset. And it was about wondering whether or not there would still be community benefit afterwards. So what I'm here to tell you is after that process, and we did eventually change that community-owned club into an investor-owned club, we grew by leaps and bounds. We were able to do more for the community. The supporter group grew from 50 to 500. Many of them are here today. And now we're taking that next step. I had to be part of a process of, of gaining, of growing in trust with uh, John Ingram and with Nashville Soccer Holdings. And that didn't come overnight, but it has come. And now we're working through something that's the biggest step that we have, which is collectively, we as a community are working to see whether or not we can trust each other to move this forward. That's what we're here to do. And so I'm glad that this drove us to an intense, serious conversation about community benefit. I'm glad that an agreement was, was reached, and I'm, and I'm very hopeful and optimistic about what this is going to do in the future. I know what this city is made of. It's made up of the, the hearts and souls of people who understand that sacrifice, commitment, and compromise is how we move forward together, and we do something great for all of us. So I'm asking you to please approve this and let us continue as a community to work forward for the benefit of all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Council members, uh, thank you for giving us this opportunity to speak. Uh, my name is David Wasilek. I was one of the founding members of Nashville FC and the forerunner of Nashville SC, and I'm now the president of the Nashville Soccer Supporters Trust. Five years Would ago- Would you give us your address, please? Uh, 1155 Saddle Springs, down in Thompson Station. Five years ago in a bar, a small group of determined soccer fans had a dream of bringing professional soccer to Nashville. And further, they decided they would be the ones to make it happen. From those modest beginnings, they began a supporter-led team that gave birth to Nashville FC. What started with a few people in a bar grew to hundreds and then thousands of supporters. Today, Nashville has a USL team, 
one step below MLS, and tens of thousands of fans. Such is the hunger for professional soccer in Nashville. Ladies and gentlemen, I've spent most of my life straddling, both, uh, straddling worlds, one of which is I was raised in the North, but spent most of my adult life in the South. People sometimes ask me whether I like living in the South or the North better, and I tell them both have their charms, but the big difference is the North is the land of no. There's nothing you can dream of doing that 10 people won't stand up and say, no, you can't. No is easy. No gives you power, but it doesn't require any work. But no has consequences. Just look at the difficulties so many northern cities are having. Because when you're in the land of no, the doers and the dreamers, those who make the future, leave to find places where they can make those dreams come true. Now, I've found in the South, in particular Tennessee and Texas, where I've spent a lot of my adult life, to be the land of yes. There is no dream you can't have that 10 people won't stand up, even in a bar, and say, yeah, we can do that. Yes is hard work, but what it gives people hope. It's what builds futures. Nashville is at a crossroads. A native son has done an enormous amount for this city is trying to complete the dream of that handful of visionaries from five years ago. And along the way, create jobs, provide tax and rental revenue to the city, charitable outreach, and create futures for the city's people. In a very real sense, the eyes of the country are on Nashville and this council. There are a great number of cities lined up to try and get an MLS franchise, and they are hoping, they are praying, that Nashville makes a mistake and opens the door to them. But more than just the soccer world is watching. Businesses who have seen Nashville as an attractive place to come are watching. They want to make sure that Nashville is still the land of yes, because if a native son who has brought a no-brainer enterprise such as an MLS soccer team to the brink of existence only to see defeat snatched from the jaws of victory at the last moment, then what chance will their plans and dreams have? Dear council members, Nashville is at a crossroads. This evening, you'll either reaffirm to the world that Nashville is a place that people can make dreams come true, a place where yes still rules, or a place that has begun the, the very short trudge down the road to the land of no. Thank you. Thank you. Scott Ramsey with the National Sports Council, 414 Union Street. And uh, I'm here also tonight in favor of the rezoning in connection with the MLS Stadium Project. Um, I've been fortunate for the last 20 so years to be able to represent Nashville in trying to recruit sporting events to our city uh, in working with not only our uh, Bridgestone Arena and, and the Nissan Stadium and, and the city in those efforts. and, and we have now the opportunity really to create not only a new opportunity for us to go out and bring in some events that not only create great economic impact, great and positive media coverage, but also to create a new campus in an area of town that we can go out and really bid on some events and bring some additional support to supplement and complement the MLS schedule, similar to what we've done for the arena and the stadium. The opportunity for us right now is to create something that sets us apart from our other cities and our competition. When we're recruiting events and bidding against other cities, they have arenas and stadiums as well. And we've been able to create a downtown campus thanks to a great vision of the mayor and Metro Council in the 90s to kind of really put things downtown and build around it. The experience of people coming here has led to more spending, uh, more tax collections, and certainly a great, great uh, media buzz about Nashville as a sports destination. Uh, soccer is certainly a sport on the rise. It gives us an opportunity with this facility to recruit some events we haven't been able to recruit before. And not only that, with this rezoning opportunity, a chance to create a campus uh, that we can maintain and contain uh, additional days, length stays, and, and more revenue and positive impact for our city. So everyone at the Sports Council stands ready and excited. Uh, with this opportunity on the horizon to go out and uh, represent our city uh, with this new opportunity. So we certainly uh, support the rezoning and the stadium project as a whole. And thank you for your support over the years and look forward to continuing working with you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Andres Martinez and I live at 502 Russell Street in East Nashville. But today I'm speaking on behalf of Conexión Américas the lead partner in the nonprofit collaborative Casa Asafran, located at 2195 Nolensville Pike, just a mile down from the fairgrounds. For 16 years, Conexión Américas has supported Latino families in pursuing their dream for a better life and their journey to becoming integral contrib contributors to the economic and cultural vitality of Nashville. Rezoning will benefit South Nashville as well as the community we serve. 
We have proposed a well-received partnership with, the with team owners in which the stadium can leverage our work to expand opportunity. Specifically, team owners have enthusiastically supported the idea of having small food business entrepreneurs from our Mesa Mall commercial kitchen having booths at the stadium concessionaire, serving as a place of growth for small business owners. They have re reaffirmed their interest to us in a letter last month. For this reason, we support the rezoning. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Howard Gentry, I'm the criminal court clerk. I live at uh, 4109 Kings Lane. I live in District 2, Nashville, Tennessee. I'm sorry, I live in District 1. I just want to see your face when I said District 2. My, my new councilman there. But um, I'm here today as a citizen. And uh, Scott just mentioned opportunity. And as I was walking in, I passed a bunch of friends in red. And they said, hey, we're just trying to save our fairgrounds. And a few other friends in red saying, I can't believe you're getting ready to come up here and speak for soccer. And I told them that I'm not speaking for or against, I'm speaking for opportunity. There has been discussion about trust, not just in government, but in investors and developers and everybody else. And this project gives us an opportunity to get it right. I've been on the council, a vice mayor, and I've seen a lot of stadium projects. This one has the opportunity to get it right. Because in getting it right, you develop trust, you keep your word, and getting it right, you make sure that a lot of the concerns that the people in red have are no longer concerns. And we make it work. And I'm gonna tell about another opportunity. I brought my 10-year-old here today so she could hear this story. Years ago, I've been going to the fairgrounds all my life. I'm a race fan. I have been going there all my life. I also am a swimmer, and I went and swam in a pool called Cascades, and there are not very many people in this room that remember it. But the day after I swam in that pool, they filled it with concrete, and it became a parking lot. And they missed an opportunity. But over the years, I kept coming. I kept going to the fairgrounds, never stopped. Even though NASCAR wasn't there, I'd go and see whatever races came flea markets, other activities, because I was not gonna allow that missed opportunity to affect my support of the fairgrounds. When I take my daughter to soccer games, I see more diversity in this city than I see anywhere else. I see it all over the place when I go to soccer games. We have an opportunity, people, to get it right but also a historic opportunity for the fairgrounds for them to be able to get it right. And for that location, on days that soccer is played, to be historically the most diverse place in this city, a place where everybody feels comfortable coming, everybody has the opportunity to be together, enjoyment, and really to be the way it should be in Nashville. So think about the opportunity, and I thank you very much. Tough to act to follow. Uh, good evening, council members and vice mayor. Uh, thank you for taking your time to listen to everyone tonight. Uh, my name is Derek Milner, and I'm a resident at 536B Moore Avenue in Wedgwood, Houston, which is adjacent to the fairgrounds. My, also, my office is also in the neighborhood. As someone who utilizes the fairgrounds often for various events, I'm here tonight to speak in favor of the stadium and mixed-use development at the fairgrounds. I speak on behalf of myself, my wife, and our neighboring residents who are unable to attend, including 536A, 538A, 509A, and 509B Moore Avenue. Contrary to what has been reported by some, uh, being in favor of the stadium and mixed-use development is not synonymous to opposition for existing fairgrounds uses. Our homes are decorated with items purchased at the flea market. We've attended trade and craft shows held at the fairgrounds, and we've supported the races held at the Speedway. The existing uses of the fairgrounds represent a vast history of this city, but as we look forward to the future, we believe that we can simply do more with the fairgrounds property. I know many have a difficult time believing that Nashville can support a soccer city, be a soccer city, that fills seats in the stadium. 
but we all know that those same sentiments existed over 20 years ago regarding Nashville's inability to become a hockey town. As of this meeting, the Nashville Predators have sold out over 100 consecutive home games. I firmly believe that the desire and demand for soccer are present in this town, and the MLS Stadium will provide the venue to bring that to fruition. In addition to supporting the desires of Nashville residents, the mixed-use portion should bring at least $2 million a year in property tax revenue, which is two, more, two million more per year than the fairgrounds generates now. Additionally, the site will generate a significant increase in sales tax, and there are additional opportunities for property tax gains when private development is added to the neighboring areas. And I, this is a little outdated now. The, uh, the CBA, which I guess is no longer pending, has the opportunity to change the way we do things here in Nashville, bringing both affordable housing and fair wages. Thank you again for your time tonight and authentic commitment to this great city we call home. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Nicholas Stanley. I live at 813 Horner Avenue in District 17. And first of all, thank you for your consideration of this whole matter. I'm obviously a resident. I have lived there for 17 years, and I've enjoyed my neighbors, both in the past and the present. And I look forward to meeting more of them as Nashville's changing. But I'm also a mother um, who played soccer myself up until my second daughter was born. And my father was Anthony Stanley, who was one of the key people for bringing youth soccer to Tennessee. This is way, way back where there weren't even any soccer fields around. So he helped to get things started along with, I'm sure, several people in this room. The point is, is we've had four generations in our family that have really enjoyed soccer. We turn out, we play it at home, we played it with neighbors, we found it unifying. I still love to go to a bar to watch a soccer game because there is everybody getting involved in it and so much excitement and it's not limited to one age group, it's not limited to one group of people, it truly is for everyone. But also, I'm looking forward to the opportunity, because I'm not playing soccer anymore, I'm looking for the opportunity to continue to go to the fairground area, but I'd like to have some green space so I can go walk and go enjoy things. I'd like to see new neighbors coming and enjoying it and meeting people. And thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity, the consideration of it. We really appreciate it. I hope you will support it. It's a good fit for all of us. Oh, we understand that everyone in the room supports soccer, and we're thrilled that you're here in order for this to be expedited. We really would appreciate it if you would hold your applause at all. Thank you. The floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, my name is Evan Wofford. I live at 806 Hillview Heights, so I'm in the district, only a few blocks away from the current fairgrounds. Um, as somebody who does live a few blocks away, uh, I urge the council to vote in favor of the bill before you. Um, I am a soccer supporter, yes, and I have a long history with that. But more importantly than that, this is a, an investment for the neighborhood. Um, and along with news of today's CBA agreement, I also see this as an investment in all of Nashville. Um, it's time for us to make the fairgrounds a place for all Nashvillians where they all feel comfortable. And I think that all of this in front of you today and everything that you have done thus far will do that. Thank you again. Good evening. My name is Tony McLarty. Uh, my family roots go back in Nashville to 1952. I live at 1100 General George Patton Drive in Bellevue, part of Sherry Wiener's district. Uh, I'm here tonight. I'm the executive chairman of the Harpeth Youth Soccer Association and Nashville FC Youth. Over 2,000 kids play soccer in our program. We're a nonprofit organization with a budget of over a million dollars a year. If you notice the name Nashville FC Youth is part of our travel group, we aligned with the program when it first started here for any type of professional soccer. We're in solid support of this. Some of the facts that you should know about soccer in the community. As I said, our group has over 2,000 children. In the, war, in the United States, since 1990, high school soccer play has doubled. The ages five through 19 
there are three million kids playing soccer across the United States. 30% of the United States households have a soccer player in it. Basketball, baseball, and football are all in decline. Basketball is down by 6.3%, baseball by 6.8%, football by 4.9%. What are kids doing? Kids are playing lacrosse, soccer, and hockey. All of these are on the rise. There are 33 million avid soccer fans in America. Each child, when they play soccer, runs an average of seven miles. That's more than I've done this year. <laughs> the World Cup had one in nine people around the world watching it. I've been part of Nashville's past. I'm part of the present. I hope to be part of the future. I want you to consider this for this evening, that soccer is part of Nashville's future. Good evening, my name is Lance Whitcomb. I live at 3900 Woodmont Boulevard in Green Hills and have been there for 16 years. I'm a board member and former president of that same youth organization that Tony just talked about. All my five kids have gone there. They've learned the game and the inherent life lessons taught there. In our club, we, we use terms like character, responsibility, accountability, inclusiveness, self-respect, and respect, respect for others. We're blessed to positively affect the lives of more than 2,000 kids and we stand 100% be behind Nashville SC. In my life, I've also been fortunate enough to visit professional soccer clubs in Europe and MLS franchises here in the US. I've witnessed firsthand how great European clubs like Manchester United, Liverpool FC, and smaller clubs like Burnley are tightly woven into the social fabric of their communities. I grew up in the shadow of the San Jose Earthquakes, an MLS team in California since the 90s, and a pro soccer city since the 70s. The earthquakes have mixed, have mixed use acreage leased from the city, which connects their stadium with the community and is used to create memorable fan experiences. In their fan zones, you witness a myriad of people from all walks of life and all races and creeds, all united in the spirit of their soccer club. In my professional life here in Nashville, I work with large companies to build customer experiences that turn prospects into customers and customers into fans. We employ digital marketing technology with property, space, and a lot of imagination to create experiences that build brand loyalty and advocacy. In my professional opinion, the mixed use proposal is not only economically viable, but an integral part of creating fan experiences for all of Nashville's citizens and visitors to enjoy. The budding history of Nashville SC will be written on the sidewalks, the benches, and the building walls. Imagine the names of the stadium builders carved into bricks on a pathway to celebrate their efforts. Imagine stories etched onto walls of how all you council people and all these people behind me fought for their beliefs, but ultimately collaborated to build a gem for all the people of our city. Done properly, this property can be used to engage all people and become a catalyst for civic pride. I see this mixed-use property adjacent to the stadium as a physical and social connector that currently does not exist. I'm ready to think in terms of abundance rather than scarcity when it comes to this opportunity. I'm also ready to contribute as I can to help build this type of culture in Nashville for the people of Nashville. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to ask the people that are standing in the back of the room, not in the line, to please seat, be seated. If you don't have a seat, please go to the mezzanine. Thank you. Floor is yours. Thank you. Good evening. My name is David Bone. I reside just on the other side of Capitol Hill, 11th and Charlotte, where I'm very ably represented by Councilman Freddie O'Connell. It's an honor to stand before you this evening. I fully support the rezoning of the fairgrounds because it's the only way to preserve the past and build for the future. The sales tax dollars that we generated from the rezoning will pay for the bond issuance that greatly improves the wonderful historic racetrack that we all love and builds brand new exhibit areas to house the hardworking vendors of our fantastic flea market and Christmas village. It will also allow us to add a world-class built to use stadium for professional soccer, concerts, rodeos, and community events. This type of the, the type of development this rezoning will foster is the type that will provide amenities that will enhance and improve the user experience of everyone who comes to any event at the fairgrounds. It will be a permanent development that will also serve the neighborhood and function as a town square type gathering area that will integrate the fairgrounds into the fabric of the neighborhood, probably in a way that hasn't happened since some of us used to save up our RC Cola bottle caps for an afternoon at our beloved Fair Park. 
The area where the fairground sits is also a Metro Promise Zone, an area we've identified as being in great need of private sector development. I believe it is absolutely the proper role of this council to foster private sector development in underserved areas, and this rezoning will help accomplish that. Something else this rezoning will accomplish is something that Nashville is in desperate need of, and that's affordable housing. As you all know, the state of Tennessee loves to tell Metro what to do over and over again. The state has told us that we can't require private developers to build affordable housing on private land, so we must get creative. The only way we can guarantee affordable housing gets built in Nashville is to contract with a private developer to build it on land that we own. This rezoning accomplishes that. This rezoning will bring affordable housing to Nashville. Please don't let this opportunity pass us by. I love living in this diverse, dynamic, growing city, but a city is only ever doing two things. A city is either growing or it's dying. This plan ensures that our fairgrounds will not die. I look forward to the preservation expansion of the fairgrounds as part of our growth. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Good evening, Vice Mayor and Council Members at Large. My name is Arthur Biasima. I reside at 2005 Universe Court, Northern Zoo, Tennessee. I played soccer on a national level, and I've coached soccer and mentored the youth in Middle Tennessee area for many, many years, to be exact, for more than 15 years. I want to express my support for this legis legislation today and for the entire Major League Soccer Stadium project. This is the next step in Nashville's ascent to become a truly international world-class city. Nashville has great soccer talent. Most of this talent has gone unnoticed, simply because we currently don't have the facilities to prepare these kids for the next level. The kids need a professional MLS team they can see and read about every single day. MLS players who play just down the street to give them dreams. Major League Soccer will have a significant impact on the youth in Nashville, which is already booming. This will provide a clear path for these kids to achieve their dreams. Passing the legislation tonight means a lot to the kids in our city. MLS invests in the youth. All the systems that come with the MLS club will be right here in our backyard. And the best players will find a path to college and even the pros. Nashville has a once in a lifetime opportunity to get this right. And tonight's vote means you are approving and therefore providing the much needed platform opportunity and access to the world's elite soccer teams. This is a dream, council members. It's a dream to our kids in this city. Please vote to support the stadium, today's legislation, and therefore Nashville's progress. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Hello, Council, men and women. Thank you very much for scheduling a hearing to hear both sides of the you know, aisle. My name is Stephen Robinson. Um, I'm part of the Board of Directors for the Roadies, which is a nonprofit uh, supporters group for National Soccer Club. But today I'm here as a resident of Di District 71114 McGavick Pike. Ugh. So that you're going to hear a lot of statistical data and a lot of facts, just like you already have. And you're going to hear a lot more. Also, you'll probably hear a little bit of frustration towards you guys as well and to Nashville as a whole. So if you guys don't mind, I'm gonna do something a little bit different up here. I wanna thank you all individually for all the hard work that you guys have already done in, in, in this vote and what has been going on. It's because of your guys' vote that dreamers and citizens of Nashville started to believe in an all welcoming community that encompasses all cultures and people. In an area of the city where people can drop their differences and celebrate together just by a ball being kicked around the field. It's because of your vote, the roadies were able to grow from 100 members, which we estimated at the end of 2017, to 700 members and growing. It's because of your guys' vote that these 700 members were able to raise thousands of dollars for an autism foundation in Tennessee, as well as to the o Oasis Foundation, which supports abused LGBT youth. It's because of your guys' vote that we were able to partner with a charity that gives refugees and inner city youth children who cannot afford to play organized youth soccer the opportunity to be a part of a team and the ability to make make a dream of changing lifestyle more of a reality. It's because of your guys' vote that U.S. soccer has kept our great city in the running to be a part of the 2026 World Cup, not only to put our community and vision to the nation, but to the world as well. So today, I stand before you 
not I would like to say that I had a lot to do with it. I would like to say that National Soccer Club, the ownership group had a lot to do with that. No, it's because of your guys. It's because of your guys' vote that happened November of 2017 is the reason why we were able to build all of that already. So I stand here before you today not asking for you to rezone the land, destruct any of the buildings, even construct the stadium. I'm asking you to keep building what you guys have already built. As you probably know, this vote on September 4th is going to have a lot more impact on our city just than the rezoning of the land. This vote will set a huge precedent of, of future rezonings and how business is handled for years to come. And yes, even though I'm a soccer supporter, I still have concerns as well, just like you guys do. But the positives of MLS coming to our fairgrounds and the benefit for the residents have far outweigh the negatives. Of course, we're gonna have traffic concerns, parking concerns, benefits of the community. But I would also have those same concerns if I was building a Chick-fil-A or a Trader Joe's in Nashville as well. There's always gonna be concerns, but the positives far outweigh the negatives. You guys have started to build something that is going to be great for every, every resident in Nashville, including the opposition, even though they probably don't see it yet. By the rezoning in this land, you are saying yes to an ever-growing community. You're saying yes to some of the city's most promising, promising businessmen and women helping out and the continued building for our great city and fairgrounds. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm Chris Griggs. I reside at 1800 Eastland Avenue. Brett Withers is my representative over in District 6. I'm also a founding member of uh, Eastern Front. We're a smaller uh, fan support group. There's uh, over 100 of us. Good stuff. Uh, but we are huge fans of the program uh, that we're seeing here, and I'd really like to thank all you guys for your pursuit of office. Uh, the one thing you all have in common is that you came here to improve the lives of Nashvillians. And today you have that opportunity again, I believe. Um, I, I just kind of want to go over a little bit of like what soccer has meant to me since I've moved here, uh, going on my 11th year. When I first got here, it was such a small uh, group of pickup players around the city, around the county, I'd always have to travel. Uh, in our neighborhood alone now, we have 600 people that play pickup soccer in East Nashville, uh, which just blows my mind. There used to be 10 of us that met every Saturday and rolled down the Three Crow afterwards and licked our wounds and shared beers. Um, but what, I, what I'm driving at with that is it, it's such a magnet for bringing people together of different creeds, ethnicities, backgrounds, uh, you know, we have people that are crazy successful and people that can't hold down a job, but we get out and knock a ball around together and watch the World Cup when it's going on and things of that nature. Uh, every time there's a game on now that's on TV and you go in, it'll rival the same, you know, uh, fan base you get for the Titans games. You know, it's, it's just really fascinating to me just how much it's grown. And the cool thing I'm seeing when you go out and play pickup soccer, I used to go out and it would be you know, a smattering of young guys and some guys occasionally my age. Well, now I'm seeing the guys my age and they've got amazing kids playing that are way more skillful than we ever were, uh, way more um, intellectual about the way they play. And what I'm seeing is, is that it's not just our generation begging for it. Every day these guys are turning 18 and every day they're voters and every day they're gonna demand that we've got somebody local that's gonna bring soccer to Nashville. And I'm asking you all, to vote yes today. Thank you. Thanks to the council for this opportunity to speak. My name is uh, Kenneth Hurt and I live at uh, 4021 Dorcas Drive. I've lived in the Music City my entire life and almost unanimously when I have talked to other Nashvillians over the past six months, I've heard the same thing, that they rarely have gone to the fairgrounds. It's not hard to understand why when you drive by. The area's de desperate need of investment if you've been recently, perhaps at the flea market over the weekend, um, no area probably shows this better than where Fair Park's gonna be. What used to have fencing all around that area is soon gonna have soccer fields and a dog park. Um, what a wonderful development for that section of the fairgrounds. Other parts of the fairgrounds need this infrastructure investment as well. It's no wonder why Councilman Sledge is for this and the people in his district. 
Uh, this plan will save the fairgrounds, um, new buildings for the flea market and improvements for the racetrack. Everything's gonna stay, uh, despite what I've heard on the radio or some misinformation. Um, I also have to mention soccer. Along with others, I started another supporters group called Music City Supporters, which is based on uh, youth supporters for Nashville SC. Uh, maybe on your way in tonight, you noticed some kids uh, playing outside, elementary school to high school. Um, there are a lot of families. Uh, this is a school night, or there would be even more. You see them in Bellevue every night at the fields at Nashville FC, at public schools like Glendale and Aiken, where Nashville Soccer United practices all the time, and almost anywhere in Davidson County where you can find a flat patch of grass of decent size. They're there. But trust me, those soccer fields at Fair Park are needed and will be used. Um, lastly, uh, I mentioned I lived in Dorcas on Dorcas Drive, which is District 34, and I want to thank uh, my council person, Angie Henderson, who uh, communicated with me on social media about a week ago, despite seeing this issue differently. While I disagree with her vote at the second reading, there's uh, still time to see the light, and uh, hopefully with uh, Stand Up Nashville and the CBA getting done, um, she will come on board. Uh, the, some of the families that you saw outside live in Oak Hill, Forest Hills, and other parts of District 34. Listen to them. They've driven by the fairgrounds for years, and you can make it a place they want to drive to for a generation. Thank you. Good evening, Vice Mayor and Council Members. My name is Terry Vo. I live at 18 Claiborne Street, Nashville, Tennessee, 37210. I have been a resident of District 17 for nearly a decade and current director of the Chestnut Hill Neighborhood Watch. I'm in support of the rezoning plan, the 10-acre development, and the Major League Soccer Stadium. I currently live a few minutes from the fairgrounds and visit a few times a year for Porter Flea, the flea market, and this weekend's International Food Crawl. And as a neighbor, the fairgrounds deserve to be visited more than just a few times a year. The fairgrounds is in need of an investment, and our neighborhood needs more services, retail options, and amenities. This project accomplishes so many of those goals. Currently, the fairgrounds doesn't reflect the inclusiveness and connectedness that our neighbors in the district want to see. We deserve a place where neighbors can gather. We, des we need a community center. We need economic development. We need a stadium for our, for our MLS team. All of our needs can be addressed with this rezoning. This is an opportunity to have a place for my neighbors and I to walk dogs, watch and play soccer, and support local restaurants and diverse businesses. This is an opportunity to create more jobs in District 17. This is an opportunity to hire minority-owned businesses. This is an opportunity to improve facilities for our Expo Center, Flea Market, and Speedway. As a neighbor, I cannot wait for MLS to come to the neighborhood, to the fairgrounds, and support the stadium project. Let's keep moving forward as a city and improving our neighborhoods. Thank you for your leadership, your support, and for listening. Thank you. Good evening. Liz Parrott. I'm a member of uh, District 20, 5707 Tennessee Avenue, and thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. On the soccer side, I've played ever since I was able to stand. I refereed in high school. Wish I could still play, um, but getting old and knees don't go together. But as important as soccer is to Nashville and the international diversity, you go to one of the games, that's all you see. You see every person of every ethnicity there cheering on one team for Nashville. And so the fairgrounds is a perfect spot along with this 10 acres because it is a joinder for the huge international area down Nolensville Road, Antioch, further west. It's a perfect spot to bring this together and to create taking an underutilized area, keeping everything that's there now, and expanding on it. In District 20, we've seen a ton of growth, even just in the last five years. I've watched where no one would go out and walk their dogs or even be seen after dark, to where it's constant. There's parents, everybody out on the streets, and it's because of development and smart development and mixed use that has allowed businesses and restaurants to come in and revitalize our area into a walkable neighborhood where everyone can go gather and watch, which is a huge part of this 10 acres that you're being asked to vote on tonight. This, the SP that they have done, I sat through planning, is a really good SP, and trust me, I've seen a lot through our neighborhood in the last five years. And it takes into account taking the stadium, 
all the way to the flea market and to the neighborhood. It'll give places for the neighborhood to come use, but it'll also create a new campus area so that people will go there before and after the game and bring more money. Instead of just driving to the stadium and leaving, they'll stay there, come before, and energize that area with jobs, revenue, and tax revenue. Going on with what Scott Ramsey said regarding the Sports Council, since 1992 when it was founded, we've had over 200 events that have resulted in 800 million in direct economic impact. The stadium and this campus would increase the ability to bring in other things such as the Frozen Four, soccer championships, other collegiate things, as well as concerts, which would just increase for Nashville as a whole its revenue, and we can work on infrastructure that is desperately needed to be worked on. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. My name is Mohammed Shukri Hassan. I'm a member of a Metro Arts Commission and also a board member of Nashville Soccer Supporters Trust. Um, I'm here in support of this zoning for so many reasons, and I'll share with you guys in the next few minutes. Um, kind of my, because of kind of the community I'm from, um, earlier gentleman who's uh, speaking here kept mentioning native sign. Um, and th this town also has people who also come from all over the world that settled, that love this city as a na native son and highly invested. Um, I've been living in this town for almost 11 years now and has afforded me so many opportunities. Um, every day in my life, um, you have to, yeah, if I have to wear a jersey, I'm Team USA, and I have to pick any city in the world, it will be, um, I will pick Nashville and because of so many reasons. Um, currently, earlier today, I was at a coffee shop and I ran into a soccer, one of our youth soccer um, coach, and he's getting ready to organize our youth to go out to Atlanta to have a Memorial uh, Labor Day weekend uh, tournament out there. Early in the spring, they went to Minneapolis. They drove all the way 14 hours. So we, we desperately need this ecosystem for our existing communities because there's opportunities, opportunity here. There's also a talent, potential talent pay, pi pipeline for our existing commun community. As many of you guys know, almost 13% of Nashville population are people that come from all over the world. The other reason is also something everyone in this chamber knows, which is that the past decade we have been this ha having, this com com uh, having this conversation where over a billion dollars went into the core of downtown to enhance certain cultures. This is the first thing that ever went out of a mile, a mile radius out of downtown, this kind of private-public partnership. So a lot of you are going to be running for office next year, and when we're talking about spreading around the prosperity. And this is one way that I'm seeing it. The other thing is, as, as a proud Nashvilleian, is one thing that it makes us, if we say this earlier, that yes to this, and now coming back and saying no, it kind of put us in this place that are we cities of, uh, the city of doers and dreamers or are we a city of words and no deeds? So I'm highly emotionally invested in this project, the rezoning of this project in so many ways. The other thing is also the kind of willingness. I've been part of so many conversations in the past decade. And a lot of you guys might recognize me, me because I advocate for my community from different ways. but. The whole, as a minority person, we get gas, gas lighted a lot and we run into a lot of things. There's a lot of Kool-Aid drinking that is loaded with inclusivity and diversity, but the folks that are involved in this project have been more than unwilling. I've been at the, t at the table since Mark Carswini reached out to me in 2015 about these things, and they've always been intentional and unwilling. So I highly support this project on behalf of my community and recommend for the rezoning. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Mayor and City Council, my name is Jonathan Flack. I was born in Nashville. I live at 4504 Wayland Drive in District 34. I rise in support for this legislation today and the entire Major League Soccer Stadium project. As a long volunteer and supporter of our Second Harvest Food Bank, the Food Bank, like many other nonprofits, have seen significant support and benefits provided by our professional sports teams. Since the Food Bank's founding in the late 70s, the Sounds baseball team, joined by the Titans and the Predators in the late 1990s, have provided significant support to feeding hungry people in Nashville. Each of these teams annually provide food drive, raise awareness during games, contribute significant financial support, and lead by example through their staff 
and their players volunteering at our distribution centers and mobile pantries. This support over the years has provided thousands of pounds of food, thousands of volunteer hours, thousands of dollars, and the help all goes back into our community. The Nashville soccer team has already begun to support our food bank and other nonprofits and through, through food drives as well as awareness, which will only increase as more fans attend Major League Soccer events. On a personal note, I started playing soccer at the age of four. I was fortunate enough to play on select travel teams, my high school, in the Olympic Development Program, and as well as in college. And at every step of the way, I always had teammates that were diverse and from all walks of life. I now have three little girls under the age of nine. They now have begun to play soccer, and their teammates are also from all walks of life. Over these almost 40 years, I've seen the powerful impact that soccer has in uniting communities. Every four years, we see this on display with communities passionately supporting their teams in the World Cup. But the same is true here every Saturday and throughout the week with our own children playing soccer. It's not often that a city council can take action to promote inclusion and unite a city. Both items are in need of our fast progressing city. I recognize there are economic considerations to bringing this team to Nashville, but supporting soccer has many intangible benefits that bring value to our community. I urge the council to consider these values as you reach your conclusion this evening. Thank you. Good evening, council, vice mayor. My name is Court Jeske, live at 905 Alder Drive in Nashville. Um, I'd like to talk to you a little bit today. Uh, I've been fortunate and have had the honor to be the first chief executive offer, officer for Nashville Soccer Club. Uh, this journey for me began two years ago when I was brought here to help build this movement that you've heard so many people talk about. And through our inaugural season at the USL second division level, we've seen it. We've seen the movement grow in the community, in Davidson County and the suburbs and all of Middle Tennessee. So I thought I would run you through a few numbers, the numbers that we've seen that your constituents have told us that soccer is important to them. The first, 6,200. That's the number of season tickets that we sold for our inaugural season, more than any other club in the second division in the history of soccer in the U.S. That is a statement that the movement is growing. We have 40 corporate partners that have joined and said soccer is important to us and Middle Tennessee is important to us. They range from multinational corporations like Nissan that are based here and contribute every day to small locally owned businesses that also want to be part of the movement and say soccer is growing every day. 19,000, that's the number of people we had in Nissan Stadium for our first game in the pouring rain back in March. We had another 20,000 fans that watched it on TV that day. Pro soccer here is, is here and the movement is growing. And I strongly support this going forward and the validation of the commitment that was made last year. The number I might most be proud of in all this process is the number six. So about a year and a half ago as the, the club was evolving, we came up with a, a slogan, a motto that Chris Jones and some of the other ones had found and they said, we need to operate under the terms of our town and our club. And everything that we have done since that point, we have to follow two principles. And our ownership group has been fully behind this. One, it has to be good for Nashville. It has to be good for our, our town. Secondly, it has to be good for our club. We have to be true to, this, true to the city that we were born in and the global sport that we participate in. So we thought our town, our club sounds pretty good but it would sound better in all the languages that are spoken about by Nashvillians. So I brought a little show and tell of six bumper stickers that we produced. Our town, our club, in English, Spanish, Kurdish, Somali, Vietnamese, and Arabic. To make sure that whether you're an old Nashvillian or new Nashvillian, you understood that the sport of soccer in this club was here for you. And I love it every day we see in the office people come in and say, this makes me feel more Nashvillian. I'm ready to support this club as we continue on our march forward. Thank you very much for your time. I know it's a long evening and we appreciate your support. Good evening, my name is Odessa Kelly. I reside at 1127 Cahal Avenue. I'm the co-chair of Stand Up Nashville. I'm here to let you know today, uh, give you an update on where we are. 
Um, we have gotten uh, national soccer holders to agree to 20% affordable and workforce housing. Yeah, I mean, thank you. It's because of you, and you demanded that because you hear that from your constituents that we were uh, able to get that. We were also able to secure and ensure that there will be a daycare on the facilities. We all know that that is one of the biggest things we hear about are working families and those who cannot afford daycare. Y'all know how expensive daycare is, we do too. So we were glad that National Soccer Holdings was mindful about that. We were also able to get them to agree to 4,000 square feet of micro units and small business units. And that is something big going, uh, going toward as we move forward here. We were able to get a wage floor that is $15.50 for the anyone that is a direct employee of Nashville Soccer Holdings. That is huge in how we go forward in Nashville. You have all heard the cries that this city, it, we don't have an unemployment problem. We have an under employed problem. Too, ma too many of the people that we count on to do the hard work here in Nashville do not get paid the living wage. So this goes towards setting the president toward that. Yet we still do not have a signed CBA yet. Yes, we have made some, some good strides forward and progress on ensuring these things, but if we were gonna take care of everyone, then we need to ensure that everyone is taken care of. We're asking you to still hold them accountable for some parts of this. As we go forward, what does it mean for us to be able to have good developers on the job? What does that exactly mean? As we go forward, we need to make sure that everyone who is gonna be working on this stadium has a way to live in this city and to have a pathway out of poverty. So those are some of the few things that are holding us back on this. But going forward, this has been a great stride. National Soccer Holdings has come a long way, a very long way in helping us change how we do development in the city. You've heard a lot of people come up here today and talk about giving youth programs. Well, a lot of these youth programs wouldn't be needed if we paid the parents an affordable wage and they would be able to provide for the children themselves. So some of, these are some of the things that we want to ask you to keep, uh, to keep in your mind as we move forward. Uh, we appreciate you and your support on this. You hear from your constituencies every day about the issues and how they affect Nashville. A CBA, a signed CBA, which is something that we're hoping to get very soon, is the way that we change that. That is the way that we progress as a city. So we appreciate you. We appreciate Nashville. Nashville Soccer Holdings, Stand Up Nashville, and the working class of Nashville, and us thinking and moving forward with them in mind. Thank you. Good evening, Vice Mayor and Council Members. I'm Elder James Davis of the Mount Zion Baptist Church here with Stand Up Nashville. I grew up in Nashville. As a child, my parents took me to the fairgrounds. My favorite ride, one not many people here probably remember, was the Turnpike. Kids could go and drive the turnpike. They had these little cars like go-karts. It was a lot of fun. I really loved that turnpike. But seasons change, as my gray beard and hair show. It is now also a new season for Nashville and for the fairgrounds. The turnpike ride is long gone. We are here because we really want the multi-million dollar MLS soccer stadium development in Nashville to benefit everyone. We have been working with Nashville Soccer to make sure that there will be some clear benefits to the community, like affordable housing, better jobs at living wages, and community services. We are happy that Nashville Soccer has agreed to a wage floor and affordable housing. This goes directly to workers' human dignity as it gives them the ability to afford basic human needs such as housing, food, and medical care for themselves and for their families. Access to decent, affordable housing is a basic human right. As we work to complete the final details of this agreement, we stand with and want to thank Nashville Soccer for negotiating with us in good faith to help benefit the Nashville community as a whole by returning some benefits to the public as provided in the Community Benefits Agreement. It is good that they are investing in the community that is investing in them. All the citizens of Nashville have the right to expect a return on their investment. Thank you. Good evening, Vice Mayor and members of the Metro Council. My name is Rose Fagus Easton.
I'm speaking today as the director of the Urban Land Institute Nashville on how the proposed mixed use zoning will allow for development that embodies best practices in the use of land, which is the underlying principle of ULI. The Urban Land Institute does not lobby. ULI is nonprofit and nonpartisan as an education and research organization and is made up of all the wide diversity of professions in the real estate and land use uh, profession in both the public, private, and nonprofit sectors. Through convenings, collaborations, and con facilitating conversations, ULI is the leading professional organization focused on promoting best practices in building and sustaining thriving communities worldwide. ULI's internationally sourced research provides thoughtful, developed findings on smart and good growth, upon which my remarks this evening are based. Some of the ways in which the ordinance before you today reflects ULI's principles and issues include, number one, community engagement and input. It recognizes its value to the fairgrounds facilities, users, and adjacent neighborhoods. The Metro Board of Fair Commissioners, Metro Staff, and Metro Planning Commission have all supported proposed SP rezoning. After gathering valuable input through extensive community engagement, the planners and developers of the mixed-use vision for redevelopment number one reflects sensitivity to adjacent uses in neighborhoods, embraces the authenticity and history of the area and site, and facilitates the promise of making the metro designated promise zone a reality through public-private partnerships. Further, Nashville's award-winning Nashville Next, which was adopted by Metro Council, included citizen input that is consistent with the proposed rezoning. Number two, affordability. Nashville is in an affordable housing crisis and Metro has challenged private developers to come up with innovative solutions to assist. The proposed mixed use zoning can facilitate tools to ensure new workforce, mixed income housing products, and enhance housing affordability. On many occasions, ULI National, ULI Nashville and Metro have partnered in an effort to develop and achieve this goal. Number three, health and well-being is fundamental to the proposed mixed-use development that this zoning can afford. Healthy lifestyle options such as natural open, face, open space, programmed recreation, daylight and cleanup of Browns Creek, establishing Greenway Trail connections, and providing exciting public gathering spaces in general will help build a healthier community for Nashville. F number four, placemaking. The proposed SP would allow for authentic mixed-use development. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Vice Mayor and Council Members. My name is Josh Severins. I reside at 1421 Old Hickory Boulevard, District 34. I'm here speaking today in support of the legislation for the Major League Soccer Stadium. I am the Executive Director of Coaching for Nashville Football Club. You've heard a couple other um, speakers from our organization and Nashville residents speak on the potential positive impact of bringing MLS and foreseeing the uh, building of the stadium and what that could mean. I want to speak a little bit on the community outreach possibilities that, that an MLS club in our city would bring and also the positive impacts of use um, that play soccer. A club like mine that's a nonprofit, we had limited resources to do as many community outreach programs that I would like, although we did, had some this spring with the boys and girls clubs throughout the city of Nashville. But like I said, with lim limited resources and financing, we would like to do more of that. And I think with an MLS club, we would have the ability to partner up with them and potentially bring the, the game to underserved areas of our city. In the community side, obviously we know the positives uh, of youth playing our sport and you know, it's the basis of it is problem solving, which is what we're trying to do tonight solve some problems for a positive outcome. Well, that's what we teach and instill at the, in the players uh, at our club. The physical benefits, the mental health is anaerobic. It, it sees no boundaries in that anyone can play, all races, genders, ages. All you need is a ball or a ball-like object to play the game. And this is great, and I think we're already seeing 
our communities coming together and to be unified behind an MLS team has got a positive impact for our city in, in, in the future and immediately. Okay, so we've long produced the world's best musicians and I think now it's time to bring the world's game to our beautiful city and, and the beautiful game is the one I think that most of us would love to see. So thanks for your time. Thank you. Hey guys, my name is Mike. I live at 616 Hamilton. My wife and I have lived in Wedgwood, Houston for 10 years. Uh, when we moved there, the only thing that we could really count on was heroin, petty crime, and stray dogs. Uh, about 10 years later, we got arts, we got food, we got tons of things going on. We got people walking, and it's an awesome place to live. Uh, I don't even like soccer. I'm not here for soccer. Uh, what I am here for is that 312 pizza moved to Nolansville, Red Bicycle moved to Nolansville. We got some cool places going up. And the fairgrounds is a wasteland. I live four blocks from it. It's dilapidated. It's an inefficient use of space. And uh, I would love to see everything around it just start kicking some butt like Nashville is. So uh, good luck tonight. It's going to be a painfully long night. I appreciate you guys. Hi, I'm Reverend Gail Seavey from uh, the First Unitarian Universalist Church, which, which belong to uh, Nashville Organized Fraction Hope, and we belong, we are uh, in allegiance with Stand Up Nashville. Uh, but I live near to the fairground over at th uh, 3908 Taylor Road. Um, I've been asked to speak about the Community Benefits Agreement, and I know you here have had recent experiences of suffering from uh, the fact that we haven't been doing good Community Benefits Agreement with our tax increment financing in the last years, and you've had to break promises around wages right here in this city. And we have heard so many people, soccer lovers, fairground lovers, thrilled to hear that um, the soccer developers have been in good faith negotiations with Stand Up Nashville to really make a, what people seem to be calling a wage for tonight, a living wage, so that our neighborhoods, as we develop them, as this area of town needs development, does not become gentrified. Uh, I don't want, I will get forced out of my neighborhood if it becomes gentrified, and I, I like where I live, down Nolensville. So, what we have found in the past is that unless there is an agreement that is the city upholds, uh, that agreements that people negotiate fall apart. Uh, 12 years ago, uh, uh, many congregations joined together around economic justice issues working at the invitation of the students at Vanderbilt College to work um, on raising the living wage of uh, the service workers in the cafeteria, the inside and outside cleaning and ga uh, garden crews. And um, with uh, a great support from many of the congregations in town, an agreement was made, uh, Vanderbilt let the people join a union, they accepted it. Within two years, they, uh, they, you know, they didn't say we're not going to do this anymore. They just said we don't hire any service workers anymore. Uh, we're going to do this through an outside firm, and they're all uh, seasonal workers. So every fall they could hire a whole new group of people. Of course, they often did the same people. We've been seeing that over and over and over again, even with uh, what was considered TIFT agreements. And so we are thrilled to be working with everyone else that has been speaking here tonight, people in the neighborhood. Uh, we set up a lot of groups in that neighborhood to support this. And uh, Thank you for Thank continuing you. it. Hello. Hello, Council. My name is Jason Howes, and I live at 510 Waycross Drive. Um, I have the closest property to the proposed MLS stadium, and I fully support the development. Um, you know, it has been blighted for a long time. I'm looking, I already see the, the greenway happening and the green space happening. Um, I can walk outside and see that beautification happening right now. Um, 
it's been it's been a long time coming. My wife and I have been working on trying to improve this property for 10 years now. So sorry this meeting is going to be a while, but it's not going to be 10 years. So <laughs> um, but ultimately, you know, being a native Nashvilleian, all of these credentials, they don't matter to my kid. They just want, I want to take my kid across that fence line and walk around the park with him and take him to the, the space and enjoy it as a citizen with my child. So I think, I hope you guys think of that and consider that and uh, I really support this development. Thank you. Vice Mayor, uh, City Council members, um, my name is Stephen Mason. Uh, I'm in District 6 with uh, Mr. Withers. Um, I've called National my home since 1994. Uh, for over 20 years, I've been involved in the music industry, both locally and internationally, recording and performing as a founding member of the band Jars of Clay. Uh, we recorded numerous albums in the Berry Hill area and purchased our album at 23, uh, purchased our, we have bought a few albums. Uh, we purchased our building at 2301 Bransford Avenue, uh, right beside the fairgrounds in 2007. Uh, in the last 10 years, we've used our property to develop a musical and creative community. And since 2015, I actually own a barber shop in that same building called The Handsomizer. For many years, I've been in this area and I've seen uh, stagnation and disrepair with very little investment to improve the conditions. With the stadium proposal, I'm very excited at the prospect of significant investment in our neighborhood, as you just heard. Uh, to create jobs also and attract more engagement and culture to the fairgrounds area, while also better serving the current fairground communities of the racetrack and flea market. I'm already grateful to see the beautification projects, as was just mentioned, already underway at the corner of Bransford and Craighead, which will give broader opportunities to more kids to learn the game of soccer or football and create a walkable green space for local residents and businesses. As well as being a local resident and business owner, I am a season ticket holder to the Nashville Soccer Club and a member of the Nashville Soccer Club supporters group, the Roadies. I have witnessed firsthand how this game is growing a diverse and generous community of Nashvilleians who are already reinvesting back into the work, supporting things like autism initiatives, which you've heard about, soccer for the nations, and many others. The stadium necessary for an MLS franchise is a huge opportunity to continue to nurture growth in this in this area that I've worked in. As a fan, I've been to other MLS soccer stadiums around the country and seen firsthand how it has profoundly improved the communities within which it exists. As a local musician, barber, and business owner in the area, right across from the fairgrounds, I want to clearly convey how important this stadium is for the fairgrounds area and the city of Nashville as a whole. I strongly believe it's the right thing to do. It's the right home for a stadium. And I'm grateful for your ears and, and your service to Nashville, too. So thanks. Good evening. My name's Cindy Mills, and I live at 512 Southern Turf Drive within about a thousand feet of the fairgrounds, uh, District 17. And I bought my property and moved there 27 years ago and have loved living there. And I have loved watching the fairgrounds area grow and slowly develop, get the facelifts that so much of our area has needed. I'm not going to be repetitive. People ahead of me have said just about everything I could possibly think of. So thank you for your time. And I hope you vote yes on this project. Thank you. My name is Chris Gardner. I live at 492 Southgate, which is on the corner of Rains Avenue. And like Cindy and Jason and Stephen, I'm less than 1,000 feet from where this development is going in. And I'm here to tell you tonight, I'm in favor of it. The reason I chose five years ago to move to the district that we elected Colby to be in was because of the strength of that neighborhood. You know, there's a lot of things that keep me up at night, whether it's cars racing around the track or gunshots that I convince myself are fireworks. This proposal isn't one of them. The only thing that keeps me up at night is thinking that our city can't come together to do something great for everyone across all the districts. That's why I'm in support of it. Good evening, council members. My name is Trey Walker. I'm a resident of District 17. I live at 1300 Little Hamilton Avenue, about four blocks north of the fairgrounds property. I support the entire fairgrounds improvement plan 
including the builder his own a portion of the property. My wife and I moved into Wedgwood, Houston about five years ago, and since moving into the area, we uh, regularly attend the flea market, uh, annual lawn and garden show, Christmas Village, and attended the races earlier this month. The fairground is an asset to our community and to our neighborhood, and this plan further enhances that asset. Additions such as Fair Park, the mixed-use development, and the MLS Soccer Stadium present an opportunity to further engage the neighborhood and to open the site to be used by a larger share of Davidson County, the surrounding counties, and area visitors. I support this plan because it maintains and enhances the current uses while working to optimize the fairgrounds property. I look forward to the plan, the plan moving forward and further enhancing our neighborhood. Thank you for your time. Vice Mayor and City Council, hello, my name is Han Thompson, and I'm the Executive Director of Tennessee State Soccer Association. Our office is located at 2630 Elm Hill Pike. You heard Court Jeske share some USL numbers earlier. Let me share some youth soccer numbers with you. We represent 50,000 recreational, competitive, inner city, and special needs soccer players and their families across the state. The kids playing on the lawn outside are our players. Our numbers continue to grow each year. By comparison, another popular sport in Nashville hockey has some 5,000 players registered across the state. The support is here, and it will continue to grow and develop over the years to come. As a young eight-year-old growing up, I was too small for football and too small for basketball. Soccer presented a unique opportunity for me, and it allowed a young black boy to excel and grow in a very diverse sport. The game has taught me far more than I may ever be able to give it back. No doubt you have seen that diversity in the recent World Cup this summer. With MLS in Nashville, we will be in a unique position to host the largest and most diverse soccer event in the world in eight years' time with the 2026 World Cup. I have not been part of the CBA Stand Up Nashville conversations, but I have gotten to know Mr. Ingram and his team through this process. I believe him to be a man of his word and one who will work with those who will be working in our community. On behalf of our membership, who will be coming from all over the state to support this franchise, we ask that you approve the stadium plans and the mixed use development. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jason Adkins. My address is 14 Garden Street. I'm from District, four, I'm from District 17. I missed the District 17 line somehow. Um, I work in Treveca as a professor and an urban farmer and my opinion represents everyone there. Growing up as a denizen of the illustrious streets of Lower Woodbine, I grew up to the whine of country music and race engines. I still live in earshot of the fairgrounds and I'm happy to welcome the new MLS stadium. However, I have some conditions. You'll be relieved to know that some of these seem to have been met. I'd like to speak up on behalf of neighbors whose childhood home is being gentrified so fast that many will not be around to enjoy the benefits from the CBA, which is nevertheless the first of my demands. Sign the CBA. Last census, my neighborhood was composed of 70% renters. As property values rise, homeowners generally benefit if they can afford the rising taxes, and renters suffer most acutely. Perversely, the people who have filled the pockets of slumlords in my community are now having their substandard houses sold out from under them. The poor of South Nashville are quickly and unceremoniously disappearing from our midst. They are not here. Many of them are not even in our city. These citizens hover just below, just beyond homelessness and depend on the neighbors around them and the services that have grown up in our neighborhood and the public trans transit that's been established. They need to stay. Nashville needs them to stay. Nashville needs them to stay or it'll fall under the judgment of a city that has allowed the poor to be plowed into the dust in the pursuit of turning the home places of the poor into a playground of, for the rich. If you can hear the message in the quiet retreating footfalls of Nashville's poor, you will hear this question, who is Nashville for? What will you do to protect the poor? And here's the general condition of the development. Use this feeding frenzy of wealth transfer to secure affordable housing, good jobs, and livable communities for those with the least power in our city. What good is it if we gain all the pro sports team in the world but lose the soul of our city? The poor are the soul 
of our city, I ask you to protect them. I also like soccer. Good evening. My name is Brent Southworth. I, uh, I reside in District 16, and I am a member of the NSC Roadies. Um, in its first year, Nashville SC is currently in third place in USL attendance. And as Court mentioned earlier, we've sold more tickets in our and more season tickets in our inaugural year than any team in USL history. The desire for soccer in Nashville is real, real, and the desire for soccer in Nashville is in this room. I personally have worked in the realm of retail analytics for years, things dealing like foot traffic, dwell time, repeat attendance. And I can tell you that if any of the businesses that I work with, I got to tell them that they were getting a new neighbor that was gonna bring them more foot traffic, that was gonna bring them better visibility, longer dwell time, and new customers to their business, they would be ecstatic. This project is a huge win for the city, it's a huge win for our community, and it's a huge win for the fairgrounds. I would like to thank Stand Up Nashville for all of the hard work that they've put into this, to not only do this right, but to do this in a way we can all be proud of. Thank you for your time, and I hope to see you all at the Nashville SC game this year. Thank you. My name's Davey Shepard. I am here tonight to speak on behalf of John Sloop, a resident at 1708A Stewart Place in District 17. Uh, John's a long-term resident of 12 South who has just recently moved to District 17. Uh, and his sentiments that he wanted me to share tonight is that Wedgwood Houston is a changing community. Uh, that's in spite of whatever happens with the stadium, yes or no. It's already changing and changing very quickly. Uh, John lived for a very long time in 12 South and saw a very rapid growth and a very rapid change in that neighborhood as well. Uh, he believes that by approving the zoning change and approving the stadium plan, uh, we ensure that the original community of Wedgwood Houston has a say in its future uh, through the community benefit agreement as agreed upon with Stand Up Nashville. Um, that is a, uh, a huge thing and a huge opportunity to ensure that a community that is already gentrifying very, very quickly uh, has an ability to uh, keep its face the same a little bit moving into the future. Of course, the stadium is going to be new change. It's going to be new growth. Um, but that plan allows uh, the long-term viability of that community. Um, on a personal note, as a resident of Wilson County, I'm a huge supporter uh, of the current fairgrounds uses. Uh, my wife is an interior designer. We go to the flea market every month to find antiques to use in her spaces. I've gone to races. I used to go to the gun show all the time. Uh, my previous employer, Dismas House, we partnered with Mr. Formosa at the racetrack uh, to get individuals exiting prison, living in Davidson County, jobs there so that they could get a good start. I think the fairgrounds, as it exists, is a great place. Uh, but I think, as they've said, uh, the people in the red shirts who are going to come in here in a little while, it needs a facelift. Everyone has agreed on that. Uh, and without this opportunity, uh, the facelift is not going to happen. Uh, as Mr. Ingram said earlier, very eloquently, uh, the sentiment was trust is hard to come by right now. Uh, I trust in this plan. Uh, I trust in a group like Stand Up Nashville to do what's right for the community at large. And I trust you to make ultimately the decision that will be best for the city's future. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jonathan Slape. I reside at uh, 1990 Shalin Loop in District 31. Um, I am a longtime resident of Nashville. I've lived here for 15 years. Um, and in those 15 years, I've seen a lot of change in Nashville. Um, I've seen all districts and parts of the city grow. But the one district that we haven't seen change a lot in our area is around the fairgrounds. Um, I think that this plan allows the fairground usage um, to stay and to be able to to have a successful flea market, to have a successful fair, but also allows us to see new people come into this city and to come into this area and really grow the area. Um, I'm also a long time, time soccer supporter. I run um, the American Outlaws, who is a US soccer supporters group. Um, and just soccer is a chance uh, to give people a place to belong. Um, we've seen a lot of people talk about how soccer is a place of diversity, a place of inclusivity, um, and this would add that aspect to the fairgrounds. Um, and I want to um, also say a big thanks to our ownership group who's uh, taken a lot of time to make sure that, you know, the people of this area um, with Stand Up Nashville, that their voices are being heard um, and that the CBA continues to progress well. Thank you.
Good evening, council members. My name is Clay Trainum. I live at 807 East Lytle Street, that is in Murfreesboro. So while I fully acknowledge that I'm not a resident of this wonderful city, uh, I think you'll recognize that I've been at nearly every Metro Council meeting about this stadium over the last eight months. Uh, I come to you not only as a potential regular patron of the new MLS stadium and the attached 10 acres, um, but also as a member of the Nashville Roadies and NSC supporters group, as well as a charitable organization, as you've heard earlier this evening. I'm also a member of the executive board for the Nashville Soccer Supporters Trust, which holds a uh, small percentage stake in NSC. I'm probably a little less concerned talking about the zoning aspects of this, other than to say that I will be supporting the businesses that surround the stadium in the way I've become a regular at some of the businesses that surround First Tennessee Park, um, despite the fact that I live and work 40 minutes away from them on a good day. Uh, instead, I'd prefer to relay my story and why I think this opportunity is one that Nashville should not let go to waste. Uh, I moved back to Middle Tennessee just over a year ago. My previous profession was in college athletics. It was constant change, saw me move from one state to another uh, over the course of over a decade. Um, MLS played a big role in my support of the sport and my support of this project. Uh, it started with Chicago, Chicago Fire. I'm from the Midwest. Um, it, admittedly, I was a little bit of a sheltered kid in Indiana, so I'd never really seen soccer in any other context than that. Uh, my first trip to Chicago changed that. Um, they were at the time led by Cuauhtémoc Blanco, uh, one of the great players from the Mexican national team, and I got to be a part of an experience that featured all walks of life in Chicago, whether that's kids from the suburbs, to Mexican national team fans, immigrants and their descendants from places in Europe and in Africa and South America. and. Uh, it was such an inclusive experience, and I've never felt it in other American sports, including the uh, years in college sports that I had worked. These experiences were only magnified as I went on to become a season ticket holder in Houston. Um, it was a place where songs were frequently sung in both English and Spanish to support the team on the field. And perhaps the best model of this exclusivity, which or this inclusivity, I should say, the opposite of that, um, is just a few hours outside of here in Atlanta. Um, if you just take one walk through the tailgating area in Atlanta, you'll go from a supporters group that is made up of youth soccer groups and youth soccer fans to another group that draws its name from a 1990s rap group to another where they might be having a Spanish language concert. And it's, they're all under this collective banner, fittingly, of Atlanta United. And that is an opportunity that I think Nashville should take advantage of. Uh, we live in a different Nashville than maybe people were used to back in the day. Um, and in, it's a better Nashville, I feel like. This is one that is growing, one that is thriving, and one that is full of many rich and diverse cultures. I earnestly believe this new club and new stadium can serve as a unifying force for good, not only in Wedgwood, Houston, but Thank in Nashville you. and the state of Tennessee. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen of the council, good, good evening. My name is Rob Sykes. I reside at 6019A New York Avenue in District 20. I'm here in support of the, of the stadium project at the fairgrounds. I have been a part of the soccer scene in this city for several years, including working for the old Nashville FC that debuted in 2014. I have seen what sports could do, not only with Nashville, Nashville soccer, but with the Predators and other sports in the city, how it can bring people from all walks of life together. And that is something that I think this world desperately needs. Me personally, I've been playing soccer since probably about, I was eight or nine. My mother was my first coach. Personally, for me, this stadium means everything, but it means more to the men and women that live in South Nashville that need affordable housing more than anything. While it is vital for, for the growth of soccer to have this stadium, it is imperative for the CBA to be signed and have affordable housing in South Nashville. Thank you. Hello, council members. My name is Robert Krauss. I live at 710 River Chase Boulevard in Madison, Tennessee, so District 10, I believe. Uh, I have a weird little history of why soccer means so much to me. Uh, my family, military family, my dad, mother, and now sister all served or have ser are still serving within the United States Air Force. Everywhere I went, we moved about to every two years. Everywhere I went, there was one constant. It was sports. It was either soccer or football. We already have the football. Everything that evolves around soccer now will revolve around a family. So. As a weird little jump there, I understand, but family is what this is. You see all these people here, they're supporting each other. They're supporting everything that they are fighting for. That is what a family does. 
That is what this city has given me. That is what this soccer team has given me is a family. And that family needs a space. It needs a good place to be. And that fairgrounds area will be that space. And that will also help the family that resolves, or resides within that area as well. That family needs help. That family gets that help with that CBA. That gets help with this stadium. So I'm not here just to ask that you rezone and put buildings in. I'm asking that you care about the things that brought you here, is the people, is the families. With that CBA, you get that. Bring those families the help they need. Continue the CBA. Let's get the stadium done. My name is Jacob Henry. Um, I live at 3312 Cobble Street in District 4. Um, I started playing soccer like most as a, as a young child. Um, I think, though, when I started to enjoy watching soccer was when I watched the women's national team win the World Cup in 1999. Um, and now I spend my weekends watching my son play soccer, albeit he's running the wrong way some of the time. But um, I, and uniquely for me, I watched um, as I lived in a suburb of St. Louis, I watched as a stadium deal fell through and it moved the entire team states away. And then I watched as that same city failed, even though they were the number one kind of front runner for an MLS team, failed in an MLS stadium, only to see Nashville rise and be awarded that stadium. And so watching all of that, to watch the, the, the deal progress, for a CBA to make as, as much progress as it has, that's why I'm behind this stadium deal and this development at, at, at the fairgrounds. Thank you. Good evening, my fellow Nashville neighbors. My name is Dr. Karen Rosenscher at 1515 DeMunbrian Street. I first and foremost want to thank you for this opportunity to express my personal opinions and to represent the thousands of soccer-loving individuals who proudly call Nashville home. My boyfriend and I recently relocated to this beautiful city of Nashville from Savannah, Georgia. We were fortunate enough to have the opportunity to choose our destination, and we were seeking many things, a unique and diverse culture, a great music scene, and most importantly, a great sports scene. As fans of many sports, including football, hockey, and soccer, the options were plentiful around the country. While living in Savannah, we had the opportunity to see the amazing things that our neighboring cities of Atlanta and Orlando had done with their expansion teams into MLS, with their accompanying stadiums and community projects of similar nature to that of what we are proposing here in Nashville. After having visited both locations, we sincerely wanted to be a part of bringing the game that we both love so much to a new, diverse, and welcoming community. And Nashville was just that. With its continuing growth of sports enthusiasts who love the most popular sport in the world and who want a centrally located stadium. This stadium represents so much more than simply a place to play soccer. It is absolutely imperative that the new stadium is in the core of the expanding Nashville community, as it is in its currently projected location. Having seen firsthand the impact it had on other communities, it is clear that the new stadium will become the economic and cultural flagship for Nashville as we pave the way for a better tomorrow for all of our beloved citizens. This movement has been, out of, has been about the love of soccer in Nashville, we are a soccer city, and we are ready to celebrate. Thank you for your time and for this opportunity. I just want to remind anyone that is in the room that has already spoken to please leave so that others can come in and be seated. Thank you. Good evening. It's taken a while to get up here. My name is Jackie Sims. Um, I live at 1813 Pearl Street in District 21, Councilman Kendall. Um, is my councilman. And I also live in Promise Zone 5. Um, I'm a member of Stand Up Nashville, and I am grateful for the opportunity that I've had for months to sit down with the soccer holding company and work on uh, the community benefits agreement 
which I fully expect to become a reality. In my promise zone, there are a lot of people that look like me. There are a lot of people who have not, are not benefiting from all of the prosperity that's taking place in Nashville presently. I've talked to numerous persons in my promise zone. I've gone to barber shops, beauty shops, uh, basketball courts, knocked on doors, um, talking to people just hanging out on the corner, maybe in front of a convenience store, to tell them about the possibilities with a good community benefits agreement. Um, people are excited um, about the possibilities and what that could mean for them. Um, we have heard numerous testimonies this evening of people also very excited about what um, soccer can bring to Nashville. So I'm hoping that um, as you all listened, um, that as well as Stand Up Nashville, um, we all feel better about the months and the weeks and the days and the hours that we've set around many tables in many locations trying to work on a community benefits agreement. Um, I feel that it will help Nashville to begin to do business differently, that it will keep those that so often get left behind um, in the picture. I am confident that we will get a community benefits agreement, that we will sign on the dotted line, that we will shake hands, and we've been working on this so long, we may even get a hug or two out this deal. So um, I'm, I'm happy to say that I support soccer coming to Nashville because I think that things will go the way that we want them to. Good evening, members of the council. My name is Claudio Villalobos. I live on 1304 Arbor North Boulevard, Nanyuk. Uh, when I tell you that uh, I was eight years old when, and that I received my first gift was a soccer ball, you know what I'm here. Um, 20 years ago, my brother and I, Roy, came to Nashville for the first time. I had been here in 1986, just passing by, like the city at the time. We were trying to visit a friend before going to actually live and work in New Jersey. Well, I haven't been in New Jersey yet. Um, I'm not sure it might be good or not, I don't know. We just decided that Nashville was more than good enough for us to stay. One of the things we thought at the time is, or talk about at the time is, well, we're gonna miss a lot of things from back home and probably soccer is gonna be the biggest one because we live, breathe, eat, and drink soccer all day. And it was like that for sure. But then here I am, 21 years earlier, and we were kind of celebrating already our first MLS game in the city. That's unbelievable in my mind. Uh, the only thing I can tell you besides all those personal experiences is that uh, soccer in my life has been anything but something that united me with other people, with other cultures, with other desires, with a lot of things. Unity. And that's what I think and hope uh, this team and this movement, the MLS, and all soccer related will do for this city, which I think is already doing. Uh, if I may, and respectfully advise anyone in this room, please, uh, and using um, uh, soccer saying that is very famous, please clean the spider webs. Score one for Nashville. Thank you very much. Good evening, Vice Mayor and Metro Council members. My name is Dr. Kenyatta Lovett, and I reside at 1013 Williams Way, Old Hickory, Tennessee, I'm in District 11. Uh, I'm a proud supporter of Nashville soccer team and also this rezoning plan. Um, there are a few things I wanted to talk to you about today. My work uh, in Nashville, I'm uh, part of the leadership team in the Lumina Foundation's Talent Hub project, which is focused on increasing the number of adults in the Promise Zone region to earn that post-secondary credential um, from, from college. Um, in our work in the Promise Zone region, we understand the needs of the community in here that they want to find good jobs, good opportunities right there in their own backyard. Um, one of the goals for this particular Promise Zone, Subzone 4, centers on expanding the community um, development in the region. I can't think of a better opportunity right now with this solution, this project, to expand that and deliver that for that subzone. 
Also, as many of you know, there are 130 plus languages spoken in the school system. So it's not hard to imagine how many families find soccer to be uh, close to home, something that everyone loves. Um, what we need in this city is inclusion. Inclusion is a challenge for our nation, it's a challenge for the state, and it's definitely a challenge for the city. Um, by supporting this plan, you will um, have a way in which you can extend a symbol of inclusion for so many Nashvillians uh, who love soccer, but also love the city. And then finally, I wanted to mention about the common love for soccer um, and also for the city of Nashville, even across the globe. In 2012, I was in Ireland, in Turles, Ireland, and had the opportunity to meet a gentleman named Niall Quinn. Uh, Niall Quinn is a former player and also chairman of Sunderland Football Club, which is an English Premier League club. And Niall Quinn mentioned his love for Nashville and how many times he would come to this city. He talked about Tootsies and every other place that I never knew anyone from Turles Island would even uh, visit. When I mentioned to Niall Quinn last year about this opportunity for the state, city of Nashville, uh, his only thing that he said was, how can I help? Uh, so there's a love for this city and for soccer that can really promote a great symbol of globalism for this city in terms of how we, exp um, how we extend uh, a welcoming hand to all walks of life and how we can be inclusive regardless of where you reside. Um, thank you for your time, and I surely hope that you support the soccer plan. Hello, my name is Ben Baden and I live at 926 Benton Avenue. I'm a District 17 resident and a Nashville soccer club season ticket holder. I think an MLS team and a CBA would be a great thing for the neighborhood and the city as a whole. The proposal is a sound investment for this city and it will pay dividends for years to come. I urge you all to vote for MLS. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Eric Burke and I reside at 1401 Third Avenue North in District 19. I'm a recent Vanderbilt graduate, a member of the Roadies Supporters Group, and an avid Nashville Soccer Club supporter. I've played soccer my whole life, but I've never had the opportunity to live in a town with a professional soccer club. When I first heard news of Nashville getting a USL team, I knew I had to be involved. Despite my meager graduate student stipend, I became a season ticket holder, and I haven't regretted it for one second. This team was a major part of my decision to remain in Nashville post-graduation as well. If you haven't attended an NSC match at First Tennessee Park, I highly recommend it because the atmosphere is incredible. Cheering your home team on with 9,000 other fans is something truly special. I can only imagine what it would be like to watch a game at a soccer-specific stadium. This could, be, this could become a reality with your votes tonight. Soccer is the fastest growing sport in America. Since 2009, MLS has had a 38% growth in attendance and has expanded more rapidly than the other big leagues combined more than doubling the number of teams since 2004. But this is about more than just soccer, it's about new jobs, creating opportunities for affordable housing, increasing tax revenue, and improving our community. Even though I live within walking distance of First Tennessee Park, I'm more than willing to take public transportation or hire a lift to get to and from the game safely. Sure, soccer fans may be loud at games, but it's because we're passionate. We might have a few beers, but we will always advocate for a safe and welcoming environment. As Mr. Eddie George said earlier, soccer is the future and can be the future of Nashville if you support our proposal. The opportunities for, the de for this development are endless, and I hope we can turn this dream into a reality. Also, if you're not a soccer fan yet, I'm sure you will be if you come to a game. We'd be happy to have you in the stands with us. Thanks. Hello, my name is Selby Grapel, and I live at 3006 Brightwood Avenue, and that's in Nashville. Um, I, my family and I are NSC season ticket holders. I believe that an MLS team would be a great addition to our growing city, and I urge all of you to vote for MLS. I've been to almost every game that we've had here in Nashville with the current team, and the momentum I've witnessed over these past few months is really incredible. The attendance numbers, the attendance numbers at every game are high, weekend or weeknight, and it keeps growing. It's been so wonderful to see Nashville come together behind the sport as a community. Nashville is a soccer town and you know it, so please vote for MLS. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Kevin Grapel. I'm also at 3006 Brightwood Avenue in District 18. 
Uh, I'm here both as a soccer fan, but also as a Nashvilleian who has watched the development of this city with some concern, as I see a lot of projects that seem to focus much more on the pockets of its investors than on the surrounding communities. And uh, I'm supporting this proposal because I'm supporting the process that led to this proposal that has been very, very focused on the needs of the community. As you've heard all about tonight, this community benefits agreement is an excellent step towards um, being the kind of community that I want to live in, and I want to set a precedent for how these kind of process, uh, projects are um, uh, continue through Nashville's development. Thank you. Hey, my name is Heidi. My husband and I have lived on, at 1711 Neal Terrace for 17 years. We are capably represented by Colby Sledge in District 17. I'm here to support the proposal in front of you today because it's going to provide much needed amenities, green space, and job opportunities at a walkable distance for Wedgwood Houston. Some of uh, the inclusivity that I'm hearing about with soccer is something that I already feel living in my neighborhood. I've lived next to people who have been there for 50 years, and we love each other and we love our community very much. I'm also here to ask for some accountability to make sure that, that you all hold the leadership that are a part of this project accountable to the direct impact of the neighborhoods not represented um, necessarily in the CBA. Um, and I speak with that because I'm the, the, the representative for the Neighborhood Impact Advisory Committee. I've done that for the past 10 years and I've met with the fairgrounds personnel to uh, work on loud events and um, events that create a lot of traffic. I have learned to respect the Formosas. I don't like the, the racetrack. I don't care if it stays or goes. But what I appreciate is the passion and the willingness that has allowed for us to have open discussions about what works, and we've made it work. And I ask that for y'all as well. When we start thinking about traffic and sound mitigation, not, not fans, but actual concerts, um, to really make this a beautiful opportunity for not just those in the CBA, not just the people who will be able to afford the tickets, but also for the people like myself who are a block away from it and are excited about the development. Thank you. Hi there, good evening and thank you for your patience. My name is Dr. Amanda Martin Padilla and I am an orthopedic surgeon at Elite Sports Medicine and Orthopedics. I'm married to a singer-songwriter in Nashville, Stephen Padilla, and mom to Parker and Peyton. And I would like to tell you some of my role with U.S. Soccer. I had the privilege of representing our city as the physician on field when Mexico brought 55,000 people to a stadium on a Saturday in the fall in Tennessee, uh, making a very loud statement about what soccer would be in Nashville. I stood on the field during the Gold Cup, and I hope very much to stand on the field during future events when people realize what a soccer city Nashville can be. I've been involved in this project from the beginning simply because soccer has taken me across the entire world. Imagine, if you can, for just one second, a five-foot-three blonde girl standing in the middle of a field at an international soccer event. Soccer is one of the few sports that embraces women and females and gives them an opportunity, perhaps even, even more opportunity than other sports. I just came home, and you might notice the absence of, of regalia today. It's because I went to France with our under-20 national team for the World Cup this month. And every day, strategically, when I went to our match meetings, I would take my USA gear. It's a, it's a friendly, uh, friendly tradition in soccer to trade gear. And I would take my United States stuff and my Nashville soccer stuff. And universally, everyone wanted the Nashville Soccer Club. We're becoming a, a worldwide city, and everyone knows what we're doing here. And, and all were telling me how much they wanted to visit. So I know that one of my scarves is in China with the China delegation. One of them is in France. One of them is in Brazil. One is in Spain. One is in Uruguay. So I am so happy to represent soccer from that standpoint and tell you what it means in Nashville. I do work with Major League Soccer, I do education, and I travel monthly around the entire country teaching education and working with Major League Soccer Works, doing community programs, injury prevention, concussion awareness, all over the country. And I wanna do it in my backyard. I believe that we have an opportunity with this space to, to not only improve the health and wellness of our community, but to give our kids opportunities. My last plea is this. I'm Parker and Peyton's mom. They're three and they're four. They think that soccer is the coolest thing in the world. So on Saturday when I put my hands in and said, go unicorn cat lions, I told them that we would do this for them so that they have the opportunities to see their sport in their town. In France, when I lived there, they had a saying when they won the World Cup. 
And they would say, vive la France, c'était nous. Yes, for France, it was us. I'm hoping in many, many years, when we're all sitting around celebrating a championship, that we say, vive la Nashville, c'était nous, it was us. My name is Topher Fleming. I live at 621 Moore Avenue in Wedgwood, Houston. I rushed here after work and realized I was towards the end of the line. I said to myself, I'll only come up and say something if there's still something of substance. And then Andy George gave my speech. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I really appreciate all the Metro Council. Uh, I know that over the past year and even before that, you've a lot of time spent gone home at 2 in the morning. Um, I know that that's a thankless and difficult, and uh, we, I appreciate it. Um, the only thing I have left to say, I think that a number of people have said some great things for, and I certainly am for, but I do ask that you look at the set of facts and you make a decision. On second reading, there were still eight abstentions, and there are so many people here that feel strongly for, so many people here that feel strongly against, that I just think it's it's in the best interest of the community if everybody votes. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Ian Wolf. I live at 4120 Ridgefield Drive. Soccer is one of the fastest growing sports in the country. Look at the attendance records set by the recent national team games in Nashville. Look at the attendance records set by Man City versus Tottenham. The desire in Nashville is there. Look at Nashville SC games and the dedicated fan following. Nashville also loves the Preds. Go to any bar in Nashville, you're gonna see a little Tennessee Titans banner up in one corner and underneath that TV, it's gonna say, welcome to Smashville. Hockey and soccer have got a lot of crossover. They're free flowing games. Um, a lot of fans who are hockey fans are, are also going to be soccer fans. So all this is to say that the team needs to be supported by an adequate stadium. So this stadium just makes economic sense. You know, it'll bring more jobs, more revenue to tired fairgrounds. It will expand Nashville's marketing outreach as a city. Uh, this is a cool city, and it's projects like this that make it a cool city. So. Our opponents tonight are gonna to talk about how they uh, aren't against an MLS team, they just don't want a stadium at the fairgrounds. Um, from my perspective, unless they're offering a real alternative of where to put a stadium that's really been vetted and they've got financial support for it and it's got the same kinds of backing amongst the community that the current project has, then all they're really saying is not in my backyard. So. Don't let a loud minority halt progress on an initiative that exemplifies the Nashville that made Amazon shortlist the Nashville of the future. Thank you. Madam Vice Mayor, members of the council, Dwayne Cuthbertson, 438 Wingrove Street. I'm also here representing uh, neighbors of mine at 440 A and B Moore Avenue and then 1225 First Avenue. I've talked to a couple of my uh, immediate neighbors there on Wingrove and Byram and Rains. Uh, they didn't give me express permission to give you their address, but uh, they did express support for the stadium uh, development as well. So I'm here as a neighbor of the fairgrounds, living just two blocks away. I've reviewed the proposed SP, and uh, as a neighbor, actually as a Nashvillian, I'm pretty excited. I feel like the SP is an appropriate use of land on a site that is disturbingly underutilized for its central location in Nashville. The, the SP to me represents a, a pretty healthy injection of community. Uh, the SP mixes a pleasant blend of residential, commercial, cultural, and community space in a way that I think creates practical, safe, and human scaled form that quite frankly should be a model for how the fabric of Nashville uh, evolves from here. Uh, the buildings and streets proposed in this SP are woven conscientiously into the fairgrounds and I feel like are connected thoughtfully to the surrounding neighborhood. The buildings are also situated, the new buildings proposed are situated such that I feel like they create really great public streets and, and public spaces. This SP injects a formidable amount of, of residential into a city that desperately needs more housing. We hear about the housing shortage over and over and over. 
This SP is injecting a lot of residential. It's not going to solve the problem, but it certainly moves the needle in that direction. Um, and it, 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 excuse me, it injects that residential where I feel like it's most appropriate, the central location, but it's also close to employment, downtown and uh, nearby Vanderbilt, and also close to a network that will facilitate their transportation to other centrally located employment uh, uh, areas in, in the region. Um, the activities and uses proposed, uh, again, are in a central location. Uh, they are connected to a strong surrounding transportation network of highways, and arterials, uh, as well as existing and future transit. I feel like the network can absorb any potential transit impacts uh, that the amenities, uh, the stadium might uh, provide or create on this site. Um, I also think that this SP creates and supports some fantastic public spaces for all of Nashville. And so for me, this SP provides a pretty significant return on investment for the city. And that return comes in a variety of ways. I feel like there's a return socially, creates a great neighborhood of accessible public and community spaces and employment opportunity for those in the surrounding community. And it creates new, diverse, community-oriented destinations within walking distance of a variety of diverse neighborhoods. It also enables a significant cultural amenity that you have heard over and over will unite this city. I think you've also heard that with advancements in, in the CBA, it's also improved. So thank you. I appreciate your support. Would everyone in the gallery please sit? Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Jeff Meisenholder. I reside at uh, 909 Oakwell Farms Lane. And I work at 200 Oceanside Drive in uh, Council Member Sledge's uh, district. Uh, I would like to thank you for the chance to talk to you guys today. Um, as I stated, I work near the fairgrounds. I know that this will impact me greatly, but I'm excited about that we will be able to have this new stadium for not only soccer, but other events as well. I'm a new soccer fan, but I've been a Preds fan for many years. In fact, I moved to Nashville because I was tired of driving two hours to Owensboro, Kentucky after, after games. I saw how amazing Bridgestone Arena was. I saw how amazing Broadway was. It's an experience, not an event. With this mixed-use development, this could be the same thing. Also, as you can tell, I like to eat. <laughs> as a person who works near the fairgrounds, I'm excited about the possibilities of going out to lunch, walking the green space, and getting something, going back to work, and living in this area. Thank you so much. Please vote yes. Thanks, guys. Thank you. My name is Gerard White, and I live on 309 Lynn Drive in District 26. I'm a... Uh, 15 years I've been a soccer coach at all levels from fifth grade all the way up to high school and I've been had very successful teams that I had nothing to do with. It was all them. And ever since I was born here, this city has grown and progressed. We've added pro baseball, we've added pro football, we've added pro hockey, and we've built stadiums for each of those teams. All of these, team, these teams and stadiums have led to growth and led to a feeling of unity and loyalty to Nashville. Now we have a USL team and we have a moment. We have a moment where we can continue to grow, a moment where we can continue to improve our fairgrounds and the neighborhoods around them. We have a moment to make a, even a better city than we already have. A better city, not only for us, but also for our children and for our grandchildren and all of the people that are moving into our city every day. It is undeniable that soccer is the future. The team and stadiums are a step towards progress. And progress is the enemy of decline. Progress is the enemy of idleness and decay. I'm a Latin teacher as well. And it reminds me of a quote that was written down over 2,000 years ago that said, idleness has destroyed happy cities. We are a happy city. We're a lucky city. We are lucky to live here. We are lucky to have this opportunity. We are lucky to have the management, the owners, and the fans. And we are lucky to have the supporters among you. Don't destroy this chance at a fortune for our city by missing this opportunity. 
take a leap forward into the future and make this happen. Let's be the city who can, not the city who can't. Let's be the council that is for the future, not the council that is against it. Thank you. Hi, my name is David Macias. I'm at 611 Merritt Avenue in District 17. Uh, I have a company uh, also in District 17 that employs 25 people. I speak for all of them in saying we're super excited about the fact that an MLS team could be moving uh, to our neighborhood. Um, one of my main reasons for being excited, frankly, is about the business development uh, opportunity uh, in that neighborhood. You know, I've lived here for 22 years. Uh, I started and, and grew my business in that time. And I've been here long enough to remember when the predators came in. And there was a lot of, you know, negative feelings about uh, the predators in certain parts of the community. But thank God we have the predators. You know, when you think about the engine of economic development that they've been, Downtown, but not just downtown, you know, with the, the multiplier effect, it's not just what happens downtown, it's not uh, with just the bars and the hotels and the restaurants that happen downtown, it's the, it's the places where these people go home to live and the, and the grocers and the insurance people and, uh, and, and the nurses that serve uh, all around the Nashville community. And I, I feel like this has the opportunity to do the same thing, except I feel like the economic development is actually gonna happen in a more diverse uh, way. I think not just for my neighborhood, but the Nolansville Road Corridor, um, and I think, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's going to give a lot of opportunity, you know, not only for housing, but jobs in, in that development area as well. Um, and finally, on a little bit more of a, a sort of a touchy-feely kind of thing, I, I have also been impressed about how the Predators have helped bring the, the people in the city together. Uh, when we win, we celebrate together. And I think about what the opportunity for the MLS uh, you know, to do in, in bringing together the Kurdish community, the Latino community. Soccer really is the international uh, game. Dr. Lovett spoke very eloquently about the fact that, you know, people look at Nashville, they come to Nashville from all over the world. This is a real opportunity uh, to, you know, f for in, in, in many ways to, you know, really embellish our, our stature as an international city, but also for the people that live here it has a unique opportunity, uh, I think, to bring us all together, all facets of the community. Um, and so I urge you guys to please uh, do what you gotta do, finish the job you started, and let's do this. Thank you. Hello, my name is Paul Steele. I live in the 16th District on Kenross, and I own a building and a company in the 17th District on Rains Avenue. Uh, that employs about 40 people. I speak for them and via proxy for about 22 neighbors. Mike, you're going to get emails from probably another 30. Um, I don't really care about soccer. Honestly, it's a little boring. Uh, too many games are 1-0. I have ADD. It's not good for me. I feel the same way about hockey. Sorry. I love the Preds, though. It's just I don't go to the games. Um, what I do love is people. I love increased safety. I love opportunity. I like restaurants. I like more sidewalks. I like enhancing neighborhoods. I love bridge building realities and this stadium ushers uh, in a heck of a lot more than just soccer. Um, new businesses, tourism, restructuring and rebuilding, a better fairgrounds experience, parks and things that bring others joy. Uh, I don't personally benefit from all that. I don't really benefit from more foot traffic for my business. Um, and uh, but I'm able to see that those are all pretty big pros for plenty of other people. We already have a roadmap for this. We know how this story ends, in my opinion. Um, David just spoke on the Preds. They've done wonders for the city, even though the city didn't really want them in the beginning. I look at what the new Sound Stadium has done for Germantown. What an amazing bridge piece connection point between downtown and Germantown that has been. Sound Stadium is a case study for the community enhancement in other cities. I just Googled it. There's like 10 articles from other cities. <laughs> you can too. I don't know what Save the Fairgrounds means, honestly. It's a little downtrodden. Uh, our state fair makes me a little sad. Wilson County Fair should not be better than the Tennessee State Fair, but it's going on right now. You can go. I digress. This proposal is saving the area, in my opinion. It's enhancing the fairgrounds. It's making way for new buildings. It's better opportunity for existing tenants and residents me being one of them. Um, I look forward to hopefully having debate with the no MLS people. Um, I'm living in the area. You can get my number from Mike. I'd love to buy you a beer.
because I don't really know what's against it. Um, and uh, I think we can do this as a group. We hold hands, sing Kumbaya afterwards, get a little tipsy. Um, anyway, this is Nashville. We've all been through a lot. We're going to go through a lot more and uh, do the right thing and make this a continued reality. Appreciate your time. Hello, my name is uh, Jason Petty. I live on 1451 Artie Avenue in District 7. Um, I helped found one of the supporters groups for Nashville SC, the Assembly. Uh, we've grown tremendously this year since the uh, start of the season. And of course, I'm a little biased. I am very supportive of the stadium deal. So I'm not gonna ramble on to, into that too much, but um, I can see how the development can really make a difference for the area because I recently went to a US national team game last summer and Harrison, New York, right across the river. I mean, Harrison, New Jersey, right across the river from New York. Um, they have an amazing stadium there, probably one of the best in MLS, but you walk outside, it's surrounded by nothing but parking lots and old warehouses. So what did I do after the game? I just hopped on the train and went back to Manhattan to uh, get dinner and a drink. So I encourage you to please support this plan. It could really help bring in a lot of new and diverse businesses to the area. And uh, thank you for your time. Hello, my name is Brad Sherp. I live at 1828 Sugar Ridge in Thompson Station. I used to live in Atlanta. I used to live in LA. I used to live in Dallas and Denver. And Nashville's my home and I'm not leaving. The reason why I decided to move here was I actually visited in uh, 2010 when the floods occurred. And I was living in Atlanta at the time. And I remember thinking, here, everyone gra picks each other up. This is what makes Nashville special. This is really who we are, okay? And there's no other cities that do that. LA doesn't do it, Dallas doesn't do it, Chicago doesn't do it, other cities don't pick each other up. To me, this is not about soccer. This is about a community that picks each other up and they need to have positives, not just the negatives we pick each other up for. The Predators last year, for example, I believe brought this community together. I think something like soccer, if we could have success there, it would all be another source for us to come together as a community so that way we can stay special. Okay, I think that as Nashville's growing, we very much have the possibility of becoming like LA or Atlanta, where it's just, you see people on the street and you just don't wanna make eye contact. That's not Nashville, and I don't want Nashville to be like that. So just please think about that. I really want Nashville to stay special. Thank you. Members of the council, I would like to thank you for your time this evening. Uh, my name is Ben Burnley. I'm a resident of District 2, a graduate student at MTSU, and a member of the Rhodes Supporter Group. I come before you tonight to urge your support of this ordinance and to continue to take necessary steps to back the construction of an MLS stadium at the fairgrounds. I ask you to make this decision neither in the interest of the owners nor to spite those who like the fairgrounds as they currently are, but because I believe this is best for the future of Nashville. My time in grad school has brought me across a surplus of research from the social sciences that show having a sports, themes, sports team leads to a happier populace. But you don't need academic research to back up the way the Music City Miracle or the Predators Stanley Cup run made you feel. Though Nashville, is the young, Na, though Nashville SC is the youngest of our teams, Nashville is a city full of new supporters. I see the bumper stickers every day awaiting another one of those moments where briefly our backyard becomes the focal point of the nation's attention. This rezoning will usher in a new chapter for the fairgrounds. This is an opportunity to create income through rent, sales tax, and seat tax. This is opportunity to create desperately needed affordable housing, and it is an opportunity to support minority businesses. In the interest of honesty, I will tell you I have not visited the fairgrounds despite living in Nashville for years now. If this plan goes forward, me and thousands of others will flock to the fairgrounds on a weekly basis, some of us for the very first time. We will become loyal patrons and help the fairgrounds grow as a vital part of this emergent city. Soccer is a beautiful and diverse game, and the United States is just catching on to the magic that soccer has to offer. If Nashville is going to be a major city in the United States, then we need to make this kind of commitment to the global game. A vote tonight is not just a vote for the MLS, but for countless other opportunities, including the World Cup, coming to our home city. 
The mantle of leadership is placed on you, the city council. I trust that you will make a decision that ultimately yields the best results for this city. And I de deeply respect those who oppose the measure at hand as well. Listening to one another is something we could use a little more of these days. To me, this, vo this vote ultimately is an aspirational one. What kind of city do you want Nashville to be? Will you continue to shrug off chances to make Nashville a leading city on the national stage, or will you embrace change to step boldly into our next chapter? Thank you. Hi, my name is Timothy George. Uh, first of all, thank y'all for serving uh, our city and serving us. Um, I live at 7528 Station Drive in District 22. Um, I moved to Nashville in 2010 to start my career as a nurse. Uh, and I just finished a 12 hour shift at our local community trauma center. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about economics, uh, but I think I know a lot about people. And one thing I can talk to a majority of my patients about is number one, the weather. We all share in common. Number two, the city of Nashville. And number three, sports. Uh, and something I've noticed in my practice is that sports really bring people together. Uh, when talking about uh, sports, people will often like forget about like what they're worried about and their pain, and they'll get like light up talking about their favorite team. Um, and in short, I think the opportunity to bring an MLS club to Nashville is a, a great chance to bring our city together and give us another chance to talk to our patients about something we all share in common. And just I really urge y'all not to let this opportunity slip by. Thank you again. Good evening, my name is Jennifer Carlett. I'm the Chief Policy Officer at the Nashville Area Chamber of Commerce. We represent 2,200 2, businesses across the region, 1,800 of which are here in Nashville, Davidson County. We're at uh, 211 Commerce Street. Thank you for the opportunity to um, address you tonight on um, the public-private partnership to bring MLS to Nashville. I think you know that the Chamber's legislative agenda includes our commitment to supporting investments in public infrastructure that have a strong business and financial case, and that includes investments that broaden Nashville's reputation as a livable city. And we believe that this public-private partnership bringing Major League Soccer to Nashville meets that standard. Um, it demonstrates that we are a city that invests in itself, providing new opportunities for play. It creates development at the fairgrounds, further enlivening Nolensville Pike and offering options to surrounding neighbors. And it makes needed infrastructure and facility improvements at the fairgrounds to benefit current users of the fairgrounds and future users. Um, from a chamber perspective, it does all this while creating jobs, an estimated 3,500 jobs during construction and 1,900 jobs during operations, creates revenue for the city and income in the pockets of workers and the businesses where they spend their money. Um, the economic impact analysis suggests that during construction, it can generate about $140 million in income for Tennessee workers and business owners. And um, once MLS is up and running, it will generate $77.7 million in annual income flowing through our economy. I'll close by noting that securing the MLS team um, and the accompanying development and improvements to the fairgrounds, it really sends a message to local businesses and to businesses that are considering Nashville, Davidson County. This is a city that invests in itself a city that creates jobs and income and revenue while offering new opportunities for fun and for play, while investing in its corridors and its fairgrounds. This is a city thinking to its future, a city where you want to be. We urge your support of this legislation and thank you for your time and your service to Nashville and Davidson County. Good afternoon, council members. My name is Scott McAnally. I live at uh, 5501 Meadowcrest Lane. I am not from there originally. I come from Shovel, which is an area I think uh, Councilmember Cooper might be familiar with. Um, and I wanted to try to bring a perspective that I hadn't heard much of um, tonight, that being one that I voted for the 2011 referendum. Um, I'm glad I did. I wouldn't take that vote back. Um, but my vote was basically, basically for kind of a historic preservation angle. Um, I have a degree in history from MTSU. I have couple hundred hours community service at the battlefield down there in Murfreesboro. And I actually tried to get a career going uh, in public history. It didn't pan out, so I had to resort to lobbying the state legislature for a living. But um, 
You know, in 2011, when that vote came up, uh, my dad was born in rural Murray County in 1931, and the fairgrounds were a huge deal for him when he was growing up. A lot bigger deal than they were in my childhood um, from about an equidistant away. But um, I thought that referendum then was probably the best option for preser preserving the area, and I think that the vote that's before you tonight and again next week is the best one to preserve it now, and I urge you to support. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Ramon Cisneros, and I am the owner and the publisher of the Hispanic newspaper in Nashville. Uh, I am also a big soccer fan. However, my passion for soccer is not the reason I'm here today. I had the honor to serve in the board of directors of the Nashville Area Chamber of Commerce and the opportunity to work in economic development. <coughs> Excuse me. Bringing to Nashville corporations, major conventions, and general tourism. This is a very competitive endeavor, as you all know, and every small item that we can add to the city can tilt the scale in one direction or another when our conventions or the relocation of headquarters have so many competitions among so many cities in the United States. I believe being a soccer city will be a big plus in helping relocate major companies and conventions and, of course, in bringing tourism. Uh, somewhere between Chicago and New Orleans is the expression that I normally use to explain people overseas, where is Nashville? Soccer is an international sport, and just as the Titans and the Predators had put Nashville in the national map, I believe our soccer team will project Nashville into the international arena. So I want to encourage each one of you to vote in favor of the stadium. Uh, when I first heard about the we uh, applying for a franchise, I didn't think we had a chance of getting one. There are so many big cities in America that uh, were going after these franchises, which were just a handful of them. And when I, when, when I found out that we were getting the franchise, I, I was very excited. I just couldn't believe it. So I encourage you today to vote in favor of this, because an MLS franchise is not something that we return. Thank you. Yeah, good evening, everybody. My name is Juma Shaibo. I represent Kujali. Kujali is an African uh, organization that was just put in. Results can, can speak for itself. Why I say this, last year when Manchester City was playing with Tottenham in our Arena Stadium or Nissan Stadium, no space to put everybody in. Too many fans came across, the, across uh, Tennessee. And why is that? Because people love soccer. The stadium that wanna be built, you guys continue building it. I'm a refugee, I'm a migrant. But when the stadium was, is, is put on and everybody goes in there, it reduces a lot of crimes and let uh, this program continue. Soccer also helps those kids. They cannot go and do wrong things in our communities. Why not to vote positive on this? Uh, also, I think uh, our communities need this mostly because of uh, economic opportunities. Why? because I work in Vanderbilt and I drive taxi. A lot of time when I drive taxi, people come all over just to Nashville to, to, to watch soccer, to watch uh, the, the, you know, the open games that was put recently uh, in Nashville, especially last month. So let's do this together because it bring us uh, a lot of jobs and also will help us uh, develop this um, state. Thank you. My name is Ronnie Woodard, and I live at 5304 Camelot Court in Brentwood, Davidson County, District 34 with Angie Henderson, who coincidentally just helped rezone our neighborhood, Camelot Acres, to an RS-40. I stand here to support the MLS project, and much like our fairground supporters, this is personal to me because soccer changed my life. I will say that 
I do slightly regret waiting in line to be one of the last ones speaking. I did have a first, a front row seat, so I got to enjoy all of the stories, but now I see tired eyes and I see a lot of red behind me, so it's not quite as much fun to get up here and speak to you, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So I'm a coach by nature. Three minutes is difficult for me, and as a coach, I appreciate all of your patience and your fantastic eye contact throughout this entire uh, meeting so far. I moved here in 2001 to be the Vanderbilt soccer coach, so check college soccer. I fell in love and met my Nashville resident husband, who coincidentally owns a business in Berry Hill, check Davidson County resident for life. You Nashville natives know you're never getting him out of here. I currently work for the Tennessee Soccer Club. I'm in their business office, and I also coach a U18 girls soccer team, youth sports, check. I'm part of the Nashville Soccer Club broadcast team. Yes, I am that annoying women's voice that you hear on my TV 30 every week. And if you want to stop hearing me, go watch a game in person. That's your best choice, OK? Um, and my proudest accomplishment is I'm a mother to an eight-year-old son, so I'm a soccer mom. So as you can imagine, I love soccer. I love Nashville. I was a logical choice to get up here and speak to you today. But what I want to share with you is that this personal journey of mine is because I believe that soccer is about the community. And I think the reason I'm speaking today is because it's about the people. The project satisfies the people. The one real benefactors of this project in the entire and beautifully diverse Nashville community that grows every day is the building of this stadium and the welcoming of this MLS committee and this team to your town. Soccer is more than a sport. It connects communities. It binds together diverse cultures and unifies fans of all ages. Drive by a community or rec center on a Saturday morning. Visit the Metroplex on a Sunday afternoon. After you get your evening workout in at your local YMCA, take a look around the corner. What you'll see are people and lots of them ranging in age from five to 55, and sometimes older, all enjoying the beautiful sport in our communities. See, that's the beauty of the sport. It can be enjoyed by all ages. It promotes a healthy lifestyle, empowers children to grow. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, Vice Mayor, Council. Thank you very much for your time this evening. Uh, a lot of tired eyes. Uh, my name is John Oaks. I live on 2160 Byram Avenue. My property butts up directly to the uh, fairgrounds overflow parking lot. What I can say after living in Wedgwood, Houston for over 10 years is that the only two things that consistently happen on a nightly basis in that area are that people constantly drive from Wedgwood to Nolensville Pike and the Metro Police Mobile Command Center directly parks behind my house and I watch flashing blue lights till about 4 a.m. What I'm excited for is to see that this uh, project moves forward also, on behalf of my wife, um, who cannot be here this evening, I wholly ask that each one of you votes either yes or no. And I uh, am very grateful to the opposition in the, in the room tonight to bring a different perspective. So thank you very much for your patience and uh, your, your unique opportunity. What I would also ask is that uh, everything that I want to say has already been said very eloquently. My wife is Peruvian. She wants an MLS team. She says that if this does not go through, she'll divorce me and move back to Peru. Please save my, 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 my marriage and vote yes. Thank you all very much. Let's take it up a little bit. Everybody breathe. I'm it. I'm the last one. Okay? So here we go. Who am I? My name is Jason Moles. I'm a resident of Wilson County. I own my own business. I work predominantly in Nashville, so Nashville is my city. Could you give us your address, please? 108 Polani Circle, Lebanon, Tennessee, 37087. I am a husband, a father, a Christian, a roadie, a soccer supporter, and a businessman. That's me, in a nutshell. So you're getting the best of everything. Everybody knows soccer's great. We've heard it. You guys know it. It's been beaten into your heads. So why am I here? I'm going to talk to the people who are on the fence, the people that are abstaining. 
We're looking for your vote. We're looking for you to come on board because we need the 10 acres. I need the 10 acres as a business person. I need the fairgrounds to become revitalized because my business earns a lot of its yearly sales off of one show at the fairgrounds. One show. That's a lawn and garden show. I need it. And I need that refreshment to come back into the fairgrounds so people start attending that show in higher numbers. I need butts in the seats. Okay? I think from listening to everybody, we all get when we have business there, you're getting sales tax dollars. You're getting property tax dollars on land that's not earning the city a dime. Okay? You have a vast open piece of land that doesn't do anything. You have the rest of it that gets utilized during specific times. This is going to help fill things up and give us more consistent income coming in. Some of you have asked for the CBA to be done. I know this gentleman has. I know that gentleman has. Looks like things are going to get done. So we're moving forward in the direction that you've asked for us to move forward. I don't want to see the fairgrounds go away. I don't want to see racing go away. I don't want to see the flea market go away. And it's been clearly stated that it's not going to go away. I want to see it improved. I want to see it grow. I want to see all parties involved in this reap the benefits of the improvements to the stadium, to the racetrack, to the fairgrounds in general. That's what I'm here for. Thank you. Seeing no one else in the queue, would anyone in opposition wishing to speak please line up at the lectern? If you would, please share your name and your address. Each of you will have three minutes to speak. If you are not in line, if you would, please take your seat. When you finish speaking, if you would, please retire to the mezzanine or elsewhere so that somebody else out there can come in. Thank you. Floor is yours. Hi, thank you. Um, Madam uh, Vice Mayor and Council Members, my name is Shannon McCullough. I live at 405 Merritt Avenue. I'm in the 17th District, about five blocks from the fairgrounds. Uh, I've been a resident for about nine years. My husband's been uh, in the area, in the district for 60. Um, I've got nothing against soccer. I've got nothing against a stadium in Nashville. Uh, I think if you have to rezone the fairgrounds to do it, uh, then that's not the way to go about it. Um, we have a football, a baseball, and a hockey stadium, and none of those three needed a 10-acre site to help them be built and to help them continue. Um, so I don't believe that the 10-acre site on the fairgrounds is something that uh, is necessary. Uh, in 2011, we had the referendum and voted no on a plan that involved the, the same wording, mixed-use development. It was housing, businesses, and hotels, et cetera. Uh, nobody wanted that on the fairgrounds then, and I, for one, don't want it on the fairgrounds now. Um, I don't think that you need to tear down what's there. I mean, you've already voted to tear down everything that didn't have a foundation, like the vet, um, the village over there, volunteer village and stuff. Um, we wanted you to make it better. And you voted for money, and you've made it better. So let's let that go for a little bit. The, um, the dog park, the green space, the new soccer areas, all that is gonna is great, and I, I like it, and it will get more of the people involved. So let's let that stew for a little bit and quit saying that you're gonna, you know, tear down and rebuild and everything, because that's gonna send the people for the um, uh, flea market. 
You have one that's been in three different publications that I receive at my house in the last four months. <laughs> this old house for one, Triple A and Garden and Gun. We are number four right now rated in the country and you wanna mess with it? I mean, that you're, you're cutting your nose off to spite your face. And if you say you're gonna tear something down, then these people are gonna go elsewhere. I, you, you did it not too long, you know, before, and attendance and vendors fell off. Well, now they're back up, so don't mess with that. Um, the stadium, that it could be built in different parts of this, in this parts of the city. Uh, there's Bordeaux, there's Metro City. I know you've heard all this. They need housing, they need affordable, they need businesses there. Thank, Thank you. you. My name is George Grun, G-R-U-H-N. I live at 915 Old Lebanon Dirt Road in Hermitage, and my business, Grun Guitars, is located at 2120 8th Avenue South. I've been a resident of Nashville since 1969 and owned my business, which now employs 26 people for since January 1970. We've heard a great deal about how soccer would be great for Nashville and how soccer is a wonderful game and how it's popular worldwide. All of that is true. It is a great game and it's very popular and it could be good for Nashville. The question is, why does it have to be at the fairgrounds? The referendum of 2011 was explicitly clear in its letter and its spirit. And what's more, it does not or either supersede the original charter, which clearly states that uses such as mixed use and housing are not appropriate on a fairgrounds. Other people have stated that, well, this would create more tax revenue. Soccer is good. Affordable housing is good. Jobs for minorities and equal opportunity is good. Much of that is true, but that doesn't mean that it's appropriate to destroy the fairgrounds to accomplish this. Yes, we need affordable housing. We have lots of land in Nashville that you could use the same logic for. I mean, you can drive by Percy Warner Park or Edgar Warner Park. They're huge areas that nobody goes there hardly. Most of it's just woods and it's dreary and there's coyotes breeding there. and. They probably go in the neighborhoods around them and they eat the neighborhood dogs and cats and they might danger children too. Um, we should just put tall skinnies there. That would be great. The referendum of 2011 was explicitly clear. I don't like to get into conspiracy theories, but you know, you don't need to have a conspiracy theory to look at the email trails that have been unearthed Richard Riebling has been trying through four administrations to privatize the fairgrounds, much of which has been done in avoidance of the Sunshine Laws and is flat out illegal and ought to be prosecuted. The members of the fair board and Laura Womack let, met privately one-on-one -on -one so that they wouldn't have to have an open meeting so that it wouldn't be public record. They kept it away from you, the members of the council. This has had a lot of planning done that you weren't supposed to find out about. Thank it's you. It's time for you to act. Thank you. My name is Gail Pike and I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. I've been a vendor at the Nashville Flea Market for over 30 years. We red shirts that are vendors are mostly here representing our customers. And I've got over a hundred customers that are very upset, unhappy, mad, whatever you want to call it. Um, the mayor sent a letter out as did Laura Womack did an editorial saying the flea market was not going to change. It was going to be there and it wasn't going to change. Well, that's just not true. There is a standard of excellence that people have come to expect. There are seven buildings, there's three open air pavilions, there's sheds. 
The new map cuts that down into half and has no outside vendors. You're gonna lose your standard of excellence. Right now, the Nashville flea market is one of the top 10 in the country and is number four in antiquing in the country. This past weekend, I was at a coin show in Dalton, Georgia, and there was a guy there uh, that does a collectible show, and he said there are so few places to do antiques anymore that that's why the people come to his show. Well, Nash was one of the top four in the country. Um, several council members say that the fairgrounds is a blight. A lot of the soccer people have said that we need new buildings. Well, money was voted to give us new buildings and, and or spruce up the old ones. And you, the council members, didn't see to it that it got where it was supposed to go and instead it went where it wasn't supposed to go. Let's discuss parking. A 30,000 seat soccer stadium, if just 20,000 people show up and there's two to a car, that's 10,000 parking spaces they need. Uh, right now, there's 1,600 spaces and they're gonna cut it in half and you need 10,000 for soccer. So this parking situation is not valid for soccer. There's 900 flea market vendors, 900 apartments. That's gonna have 900 cars. Where are they gonna park? Flea market vendors, there's a thousand vendors. We all have cars. I employ three people. Only two are there at any one given time. But where are all these people gonna park? Um, there's just not enough parking. It's, if it's really about soccer, why is there this rush that it had to be the fairgrounds? Why were no other places investigated? Why was the traffic study that they didn't like just kind of covered up? There has just been too much that the council didn't know about that was hidden. The soccer speakers talked about the buildings again and the fairgrounds being in disrepair. Money was voted after the referendum for it. It just never got where it was supposed to go. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. My name is Pat Williams. I live at 4301 Elkins Avenue. Good evening, council members and others present. I would like, I, one of the points I was going to make was just made by the lady ahead of me about the parking situation. I think that is a major problem. I've been told that there are tens of thousands of, of parking spaces lacking for the, the development that would be uh, done. I would like to ask all of you to please be the council who takes care of all of those who take care of all of us. We have not been able to afford to fully fund our public school budget. We have not been able to afford raises for our police and firefighters. I would like to beg each of you to please read and reread the letters that have been sent to you by the Metropolitan National Education Association and the FOP. I won't try to repeat what was in those letters. You all have them. I've been an advocate in the mental health community in this area for over 40 years now. I would like to suggest that all of this wave of soccer people that are overtaking Nashville, I'm not against soccer, but I would like to, to beg them to advocate for something that would be so wonderful for the kids that are starting to play soccer so young. Advocate for a law that requires they wear helmets to prevent all of these brain concussions that some of which can cause brain damage that will follow them for the rest of their lives. Thank you, and I, be I beg you to please vote against this rezoning. There are better places that are more appropriate for the stadium. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, councilmen. It's, I see that there's like 26 of you here tonight. There's not 40. I don't understand that. I appreciate you all coming out tonight, though, and letting us uh, listen, and I appreciate the soccer stadium people being here, too. I'm not against soccer whatsoever. We got plenty of land here to put a soccer field on, and I encourage y'all to make sure that that happens. Our fairgrounds has been here for 109 years, and it needs to continue to be here. I would understand if the soccer field could fit there and it would work, it would be fine, but it's just not gonna work. You can't put a thousand pounds of something in a one pound bag. And that's just, to be honestly true. Uh, Mr. Kendall was wanting to get, you know, 10 or 20 or 30 percent affordable housing. Well, I ask you this question. Why is any of the property 
around our fairgrounds not been bought by Metro to do any affordable housing whatsoever. I don't understand that whatsoever. There's been a lot of property sold. Uh, Mr. Bowers and, and uh, Mr. Shacklett sold the land right on the corner, Rains and Wedgwood. Metro didn't buy it, and I don't understand that. They want to take 10 acres of our land and do that with, with our land. It's not, it's not right for that land to be sold or done anything with that or even leased because over a 99-year period, we're going to get a million dollars. That's what's going to come out of that. And I understand the economic impact for the soccer stadium, but we need to put it at Rhodes Park or put it in one of the other locations that we have 5,000 acres. I, I encourage all y'all to listen to what Mr. Glover's got to say and Mr. Cooper's got to say. They're on the right track of all this, and I encourage y'all to listen to what they got to say and vote for the people and vote for the referendum and have us, let us have a referendum to vote again as we did in 2011 in January to keep our fairgrounds the way it is right now. And um, I'd also like to say there will be an election coming up and uh, I'm gonna work hard in that election myself and I encourage y'all to do the right thing. I'm not gonna stand here and use all my time because I know y'all need to go home tonight and I appreciate everything y'all are doing and encourage you to do the right things. Thank y'all. Kevin Warner, 1028 18th Avenue South in um, Music Row. I'm against this project in its current form. It's gonna increase dramatically the demand for Metro's stretched public services without funding. We all know that big development means increased strains on public safety and infrastructure resources. How are you gonna pay for this? We already know that raising taxes, raising taxes is not gonna fly. I think the stadium deal needs more work because there are too many taxpayer giveaways. $50 million of general obligation bonds, $200 million plus of revenue bonds, and unknown repayment prospects. Construction and lease terms that will put Metro taxpayers on the hook. 10, 15, maybe 20 years from now, if things don't go the way the wide-eyed optimists predict. I don't want you to give Mr. Ingram and his team incentives, favorable lease terms, or other goodies. They don't need them. He and his team, his corporate interests, have generated over $2 billion in revenues last year. $2 billion. They don't need giveaways and incentives. I encourage you to ask yourselves this. Will this deal help the thousands who are struggling for roofs over their heads? Is this deal going to help those who need better transit choices so they don't need to take two or three transfers on public, public transit to get to their jobs or get home? Is this deal going to help the taxpayers who have no interest in soccer? I fear this deal is only going to help those with business interest in or near, in town, somewhere or near the fairgrounds. Contractors, lawyers, consultants, accountants, designers, hospitality shapers. Did I say consultants? And any other business development type who wants Nashville to continue growing without making the commitment to pay for public safety and infrastructure. These are the same people who love it when another 100 hotel rooms come online. Wow, the it city. These are the same people who have been cramming five pounds of you know what into four pound bags in the urban core for the last 10 years. When does it stop? Please spend some more time. There's no rush to judgment. Thank you. Thank you for your time. My name is Tim Lewis. I'm from Ashland City, Tennessee. I've been around Nashville most of my life. I look around at the sea of red shirts that you see here, and I, that was the only level of eloquence I think you're probably going to see all night, but that sounded pretty good. You, People from race and community are different animals. We don't bring just a pair of shoes and a shirt to a racetrack. We have to build our car, buy the rule book, bring it down to compete, and then redo that every time that a race comes back. We're very committed. 
We're very loyal, we're very patriotic, and we're very, very supportive of our local government. But we see this as a threat to our racetrack. It absolutely is. I'm not gonna give you any information that's not readily available to anybody with a heartbeat and a brain cell. If they build this stadium there, and you look over this racetrack, one environmental study would make us look like the bad guy. What does the bad guy have to do? He has to go away. It's, it's not that difficult to figure out. If they move in and one thing happens, we're triggered completely out of the program. And we don't really want to step by quietly and let that happen. When they were building the brickyard in Indianapolis, they were racing at the Fairground Speedway in Nashville. It's that old. It's been here that long. It's the second oldest operating speedway in the United States of America. And if you want to compare this to the oldest, it's far and above better. We have had a disconnect in the past between the fair board, NASCAR, and our racing community. That's right, at one time, there was no Titans in Nashville. There was no Predators in Nashville. There were no Sounds in Nashville. But there was big league, top level, cup racing here at that very facility that people want to kind of just push aside and let it go into the ways of history. We cannot and will not let that happen. We do not want to let that happen. So we appeal to you in your sense of reason to understand that this 109-year-old racetrack and everything that it means to people is true to our hearts and dear to our hearts. It really is. You want to talk about diversity? I heard diversity this and diversity that. I really heard that. But you want to see diversity? You want to see a 12-year-old kid racing on the same racetrack with a 70-year-old person? That is a definition of diversity. They can compete on the same track at the same time under the same rules, and nobody stops them. And your desire to win is what puts you up toward the front. The people you see here are dedicated. They're fantastic people. You see people like Sterling Marlin here. You see people like Tony Formosa here that are supporting this track, but they are not getting the support from you guys, and this is what we need. Our disconnect with the media is our problem, but our disconnect with you has to be resolved. You need to understand the importance of what this speedway means to these people. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Stephen Wright. I live at 528 Foundry Drive in District 20. As a Nashville native, concerned citizen, lifelong supporter, and visitor of the fairgrounds, I ask you, the council, to please vote no on this MLS deal. I fear that having the stadium and mixed use development at the fairgrounds will not only disrupt all current fairground uses, but will inevitably kill them. As a flea market vendor, I have been told by the administration, the people behind this deal, that they are looking out for the best interest of the vendors and that they want to take care of the vendors. The vendors will be taken care of first with the building of the new expo building. I cannot trust this information. I feel that not only we the taxpayers, but you the council members have been treated like mushrooms. We are kept in the dark and fed manure. The new planned expo facilities are extremely too small to hold our current flea market. We will lose a lot of good vendors, and there is not nearly enough parking to accommodate. I feel there has been no true transparency with this deal. I have attended several meetings regarding the fairgrounds and this MLS deal. I can never get a straight answer for any of my questions. I am generally told I will have to get back to you on this or that study is not in yet. And those are the same question, the, the same answers I've heard your questions be answered with numerous times during this process. So I ask, how can someone make a decision on anything if the questions they ask cannot or will not be answered? With the harm that this plan will do to the current fairground uses, the unauthorized spending of funds from the fairgrounds and sports authority budgets, the constant change to the fairgrounds plan, the free land giveaway to billionaires, 
and the recently uncovered secret plans to bring a car auction and car museum to the fairgrounds property with all the backdoor secret meetings and hiding at country clubs we cannot trust the people behind this deal based on all of this information or lack thereof i ask you please vote no on this deal i'm a family man i'm a businessman Almost half of my yearly income comes from that monthly flea market. It's what I buy the diapers with that I put on my little girl. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dan Clements. I live at 3921 Oxbow Drive. That's in Councilman, Council Lady Hay, Haywood's district. And I come tonight asking you to consider your decision as far as the uh, flea market, racetrack, and all that concerned, but I really come speaking for our neighborhood, for the neighborhood in Metro Center in that area, where you can go where there's 84 acres of, of, of land that you could build everything you want to on it. The C, uh, the the C, uh, the the agreement that you guys have talked about that has been talked about. It would fit well in Councilman Hall's district, Councilman Hastings district, and the other districts in that area. We would do we would do well to have that in that in, in that area. I am I look around in the red shirt and I see the minorities. I see that I am the minority. We've been in that area of town, the border areas, some of that area, where we've been kind of overlooked a lot of times when it comes to industry. That would fit well in that area. We're asking you to think hard, think long about putting this in our area. As I was listening to the uh, other group that stood here and talked about uh, what they had in their district, jobs, jobs. Everybody got up and said that they had uh, companies in that district. Come to Baltimore area and see how many African-American uh, uh, jobs in that area. How many companies, African American companies, are in that area? Come there and see what, how you could help us in that area to build up that area where, where it's really needed. It's not really needed in, in the um, fairgrounds. Fairgrounds got enough down there. It's needed in our area, in our district. Even though I don't live in um, the Metro Center area, I live close to it. I have friends. I have a lot of people that live in that area. Remember, it ain't been but a few months ago that you came to uh, <clears throat> the, the, uh, the Y and you wanted to take it over. Remember that. Now you got a chance to really act for that community, for our community. You really have a chance to allow us to be a part to be represented, you can represent us, even though we are the minorities. There's already a soccer park down there in Metro Center. There's already, already the, the Titans practice facility down there. We ask you now to consider bringing uh, that industry to Metro Center. You got the Titans downtown, more or less. You got uh, Predators downtown, more or less. And you, you, you took uh, the Ford Center to Bellevue. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Rick McElwain. I live at 30, 3839 Hamilton Church Road, lifelong resident of Davidson County. And I was reading the news story the other day where the Bridgestone Arena and the, and the uh, Nissan Stadium was due for maintenance at over $400 million. And now we're wanting to spend over $300 million on a soccer stadium. I think that we need to stop the reckless spending right now. And as far as the 10 acres on the fairground site, the fairgrounds was never for a mixed use development. It was never for housing or for a hotel. And I just don't really trust the fair board with all this that they're doing right now. They're doing all the shady deals. Like, for example, when we were at our driver's meeting in, July, in January, the fair board director told us that Tony Famosa had signed a contract already. We had a five-year contract in place. When we come to find out, it was March before we got the contract signed. Why did she have to lie to us about that? I mean, that's just, the, that's just part of the deals that we're dealing with right now. We, we don't want the 10 acres there. So if there's anything we can do with that, we need to do it now. Thank you.
Good evening, Council. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you tonight. My name is Andy Gathormson. Uh, I live at 200 East Pearson Court in Hermitage, Tennessee. I'm not much of a public speaker, but um, if you'll indulge me for a second. Uh, I've been attending events at the fairgrounds since I was 10. And, um, you know, lately I've, I've had to reflect a lot on how it's been since then. And it saddens me at what the fair board that was just referenced uh, has done over most of my lifetime to that facility. It, uh, it really has eroded what was once a good thing. Um, it also saddens me that some believe that this rezoning deal is good for the future of the site and for the citizens and taxpayers of Nashville. Many tonight have told you that the area has been neglected. They're right, it has been. But in retrospect, it probably all started back when the fair board decided to run off two very profitable, I'm sure, at the time and likely profitable today, NASCAR races that were at the fairgrounds. That revenue alone would have likely sustained the facility on its own. Since then, though, the place has gone downhill and little energy has been put back into it. Every year, that site has just been allowed to slowly rot away. It makes me sad. So while I'm glad that suddenly there's such great interest in the site, it troubles me that it comes at the potential loss of the true intentions of the facility, and instead has become what could be a huge gift to a handful of select developers without the transparency that an issue like this truly deserves. As a professional who's lived in this city my entire life and employed thousands of people, my company and others just like it would love the opportunity to use or even have such a prime real estate at a fraction of, of the fair market value, just like these developers possibly could get. But that opportunity doesn't seem to uh, exist for the rest of us. I don't come before you today as a member of a special group, uh, a labor union, or even have some special t-shirt to wear. Uh, I'm just a guy that is born here, one of the rare few that are still around. And uh, remember how special this land has been for, for generations. Um, this rezoning zeal could, could potentially compromise much of that and I hope you vote against it. And for the record, I support the proposed MLS franchise and a purpose-built stadium for them to be in. Uh, just don't use this property for that, please. If this damages the relationship that we have with this ownership group, then maybe we just shouldn't be with that group in the first place and look to someone else to bring the same team idea and stadium to Nashville. Uh, this deal shouldn't be dependent on that one piece of land or this particular arrangement. Uh, if it's a good thing for Nashville, and it's such a, a demanded thing, then someone else will step forward for it or another piece of property will become available for it. Thank you. My name is Lynn Newcomb. I live at 338 Blackman Road. If you want to come experience the traffic, come to Blackman Road about five o'clock, five days a week. Um, I've lived in my house for 29 years, Metro taxpayer. Nobody gave me an incentive to stay here. I stayed in the city. I listen to the railroad tracks. I hear the racetrack in October. Um, I hear the fire engines down the street. I chose to stay in the city. Uh, the, uh, uh, I didn't get a tax break to stay here. I don't get an incentive. Um, I'm a single woman that lives in Davidson County. My dad had a business for over 30 years in Woodbine. Woodbine is, has been developed over the years. I've seen where they closed the Bransford Smorgasbord. Uh, it was a restaurant. They closed it and it's become a huge development in Woodbine. I don't know if you realize this, but these people are your Vine Hill Woodbine supporting fairgrounds people. They've, they've been here most of their lives. If they don't live in Davidson County now, they did before. I know uh, one man over here, he used to have a business in Woodbine. So um, I'm against the giving away 10 acres to a man that has a lot more money than probably most of us in this room. Um, yes, I am nervous. I can talk, but I don't do well talking in public. Um, the, um, I, I hope you uh, vote your conscience and that uh, you do the right thing for the people of Davidson County. Ladies and gentlemen of the council, my name is Daryl Palmore. I live at 458 Jeanette Avenue, Gillisville, Tennessee, 37073. This is a bad idea. You cannot give your teachers, police, or firemen the raise that you have promised them 
but you want to give a promised billionaire land for free. A vote for this referendum is a vote against all of your public servants. Hello, I'm Kathy Grodi. I live at 7208 Autumn Crossing Way in Brentwood, Tennessee. I am the uh, vice chairman of South Central Region of Davidson County Republican Party, and I represent districts 16, 17, 18, 19, and 21. I've noticed that I tried to listen to every single person that was um, in the other side of this, this coin, and a lot of the speakers, I would say almost 50% of those speakers, had a financial interest to gain if you voted for the rezoning. I want to say yes to soccer. We are a yes city. I want to say yes to kids. I love kids. I love diversity. Um, and I love Nashville. I just, I want opportunity and I want growth. Um, I'm against giving away 10 acres uh, for less than the fair market value, when if we were to sell those 10 acres for fair market value, we might be able to fund the raises for the police teachers and firefighters. So that's a thought. Maybe we want to sell it to the Ingrams at the fair market value. That might not be a bad idea. Uh, in my research, uh, I've learned that 70% of the voters voted against changing the fairgrounds, that it would always be a fairgrounds, and they voted this down. They've already spoken. Uh, so some, some billionaires trying to get uh, get this passed without the voters speaking, I believe, would be wrong. In 2016, Mayor Barry's proposal uh, included demolishing several buildings on the fairgrounds to make way for soccer, and that by 2019, it would be totally, the fairgrounds would be totally displaced. I urge you to vote against the rezoning. Hi, council members. My name is Jennifer McElwain. I am a resident of Davidson County. I am a native Nashvilleian. I live at 3839 Hamilton Church Road in Antioch. I thank you for your time and attention tonight. I know it's been a long evening, so I won't waste your time with a lot of repetition, but I would ask you to again reconsider the fact that voting for this is, in fact, a vote against your public servants who have not received their promised raises. Our public servants deserve more than what they have been given. They deserve their pay raises. The time that has been spent on this alone could have been spent trying to find ways in the budget to fund money for our police and for our firefighters and for our teachers. Additionally, I would like for people to give additional research and consideration to the traffic that will come along with this stadium. We need to know the impact and the funds that will be needed from TDOT, the funds that will be needed, and if there will be an impact to the railroad, what will have to be done there. So please, again, think long and hard about our public servants and about additional funds that may be needed from the city to fund the infrastructure for the traffic. Thank you. <clears throat> Madam Vice Mayor, Council, I want to first say thank you for your time and attention to both sides of this matter. My name's Scott Jones. I live at 6374 Morton Road in Greenbrier, Tennessee. I am the manager of the Tennessee State Fair. I have been involved with the fairgrounds, racetrack, and the flea market for over 31 years. And I am a former Metro employee. I am here for, I am for improving the fairgrounds, but at what cost? We all agree that the buildings need to be replaced. The grounds definitely need a, a facelift. If the fairgrounds was improved to complement the Music City Center, the possibilities would be limitless instead of a confined in a small corner of the property. Last week, we had our first meeting with the design team about the layout of the grounds. There are some troubling issues with traffic flow, building layout, but our main problem is parking. The State Fair takes a large footprint which includes the barns, all the buildings, the racetrack, a large portion of surface parking. 
that only leaves less than 2,000 parking spaces for general parking. This will ultimately strangle the fair and other events with a long tradition of being held at the fairgrounds. The main goal of the state fair is to educate our youth about agriculture from farm to fork, the arts, showcasing new technology, and making long-lasting family memories. Imagine the look on a child's face the first time they experience a petting zoo. They milk a cow for the first time, hold a rabbit, ride a pony, the first taste of cotton candy, shearing a sheep, and imagine the first kiss on a Ferris wheel. All these things cannot be achieved in 20 acres. I know it's hard to stop progress, and it's even harder to stop a mistake. This should be a simple business decision with a win-win outcome, but there is no win here for the events of the fairgrounds. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor, members of the council. Dwayne Domino, I reside at 101 Cherokee Place, Antioch, Tennessee. I appreciate your attention and understand the long nature of what's going on. It may be a little longer, but uh, there's three things I'd like to address. Number one, uh, he mentioned the challenges with putting on the fair, and in particular, I've shared on your desk a, a letter or a page with the section of the charter, Article 2, Section 10, that specifically addresses the responsibility of the fair board, the powers and duties in particular. And if you'll notice highlighted on that, it says, and they, that's the fair board, shall, in legal parlance, that's a must, that's not a debatable topic, uh, use and maintain said property by holding thereon at least once a year for not less than six days a fair or exposition for the benefit of the people of such counties. And they, that again being the fair board, may lease for amusement purposes said property at such times and in such ways as to not to interfere with the operation of said fair. There's no honest person in this room that can say what they have proposed and is on these maps that they just took back here to make sure nobody sees, does not interfere with the operation of said fair. I've also included a link to the whole Metro Charter in the event you're all looking for something to keep you awake on another night besides tonight. I want to address the statements been made by a number of people of the so-called underutilized property. And I ask you, is the Titan Stadium underutilized? Is the Sounds Ballpark underutilized? Is Bridgestone Arena underutilized? Most of y'all would probably say no. Well, the fairgrounds brought in more people to the city of Nashville last year than either of those three. Now, don't tell me it's underutilized. That's a bold-faced lie. It's a talking point that sounds good, but it's not true. And it's time we begin to recognize that. The soccer stadium that's being proposed to be built on the property would be required to sell out 52 games in order to bring in what the fairgrounds brought in last year. The Titan Stadium required to sell out 27 games in a year to bring in that many people. And the third thing I want to address in my last few seconds, the rent. It's been said that the soccer promoters are paying rent for the 10-acre giveaway that's been offered as a bribe. That's not the word, the language of the, of the resolution that y'all passed, 31 votes in, back in November says, but the word inducement, when you look it up, means bribe. They're not paying rent. The fact is they are returning revenue that the fair board has been historically collecting and given, they're gonna collect it and give us half of it back. That's not a good deal. Don't take my cow and give me half the milk back and tell me I got a sweet deal. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Vice Mayor and members of our Nashville Council. Um, I come before you to simply represent one member of a single parent family. I'm a native Nashvilleian, went to grade school at Turner, swam at Cascade, rode those Ferris wheels, the roller coasters, 
and, and with all the races, the stock car races is where I grew up. My father built the most major brand tool company in Nashville. He was the first to bring the tools to Nashville from a major manufacturer. I went to church locally. I worked for and retired from a Fortune 58 here in Nashville. So as a retiree and having raised one son, I, to I totally support what happens at our fairgrounds and our history of the fairgrounds is totally diminishing. No one has said anything about the fact that over 100 years ago there was a horse racing before there was stock car racing. There is a horse buried near the racetrack. No one has wanted to preserve any history that I'm sure most of you don't even know. If we looked at where we are today, and the issue tonight is MLS. I'm not opposed to MLS, I'm for it. I am opposed taking land that is not earmarked nor given to the state and later to metro government taxpayers that turns into something that has become an issue of what do we do with this free land and this mixed use development and you're totally diminishing our flea market where someone as me, one single parent retiree, has been selling at the fairgrounds since 40 years ago was the first time I had a booth. I'm still there. I spent three long days in a booth, not to mention what it takes to put the booth together, and it is a supplemental income. If we keep going the way we are in our city with our budget upside down, what will happen is someone like me with a moderate mid-level income has turned into a low or modest low income person will be forced to leave this county, which is my home. I only speak as one person, but I represent this class of working people as myself. So when each of you council decide what to do with our city, okay, you can turn our budget upside down, you can force a tax increase in two more years, and you can do it every four years. And when you do, you will have no one living and working in this same county in a short period of years. Without notice, I was forced to go around the world and live in Greece for two months. Thank you. And my son lived. And this is where people survive. Thank you for your time. Hi, my name is Jerry Coble. I live at 1104 North Graycroft, Madison, Tennessee, and I'm a registered voter in Davidson County. I'd first like to start off with, we can't afford this. How can the city pay for this? How can you sit here and choose? This is going to come down to a life and death question. When you can't pay the firefighters, you can't pay the first responders, you can't pay any services, if your mother or your daddy had a heart attack, you would want services to be there. But they can't be there because you're cutting their budget. We're putting over a hundred people, uh, okay. We're putting over a hundred people in this city per day. But we're cutting the firefighters budget and we're cutting Metro Police Department budget. We're cutting every budget. Y'all pass the budget that you can't fund. Now, and you say, well, we can't break a commitment to soccer. Well, you broke a commitment to the city. Every person in Davidson County, not just one little small community, your community or your community, you broke it to every Davidson County resident. You have broke it. This is gonna be blood on your hands if you vote for this product. It's gonna be blood. Somebody in Nashville is gonna die from this because we have no first responders to respond. And you're going to sit here and vote for this? We cannot afford it. Now, I'm going to move on. Cut. To, you, you sit up here and tell me, or they sit up here and tell you that the fairgrounds is going to operate the way it is. Okay? I take their picture, their overlay of the fairgrounds, and you show me. We got the biggest race that Nashville has coming up to All-American 400. We cannot park our trailers and our haulers, all the people that will be there, inside the fairgrounds, inside the racetrack. But... And their new plan is no pits on the outside, period. Will we right now have overflow? We have enough parking place outside the racetrack probably to park 100 or so vehicles out there. We don't have that no more. If you let this go, we don't have that no more.
So you tell me how it can survive. The biggest show, y'all telling me, well, it can expand, it can expand, it can grow. We're going to put money in there so it can grow. Well, if you take the property away, it can't grow. If you cut the Titan Stadium down to 30,000 people instead of 60,000 it seats, the Titan's going to grow? They're going to make more income? No. That's what you're doing to this property. Every aspect of it, the fairgrounds, the flea market, and everything. I swim in Cascade Swimming Pool. I bet you don't even know what Cascade Swimming Pool is. I bet you I bet y'all don't even know what that, you know, what that property is. I went to the Raston in the Coliseum. I've lived here all my life. Y'all are take, taking this property, not as a council, if you vote yes for it, and squeezing the life out of it. There's no opportunity for growth in this property. None whatsoever, and you know it. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Zach Harrison, uh, 1440 Theta Pike. I live in Columbia, Tennessee now, but I grew up in Nashville. I am a Nashville kid. And I heard all the people for the for the soccer team, you know, one of the things, one of the biggest arguments is inspiration of dreams. Give something for the kids. Um, I grew up here, and where I dreamed at was at the fairgrounds. That's where my dreams were inspired as a kid. There's thousands of us here that that's where their dreams were, were inspired at the fairgrounds. Now, we know everything here. We know all the issues, all the dirty deals, all the, all the everything and the way that it's going for this zoning for giving the billionaires the 10 acres. I put it to y'all, I'm asking y'all, when you lay down and you think about giving this for the soccer kids, I'm asking y'all to look inside yourself and say, is the right thing telling the kids it's okay to take people who are living their dreams right now, supporting their families from this place, take that away from them to give the kids dreams to dream for when there's other places where it can go to right now? Hello, my name is David Coble. I live at 1335 Belgrams Lane. I'm, uh, I'm 29 years old, and every week I have to sit down and budget my life out. I'm sure each one of you do it. I'm, it's part of life. I don't see how we can spend money we don't have when we have a necessity that we need to cover. Um, I'm sure y'all just heard my dad. He's really passionate about it, but he's exactly right. The firefighters, the paramedics, they need the money. You cannot put a game ahead of somebody's life. There's no room for growth at the fairgrounds. I've heard so many of these council members talk about it because I've been to all of your meetings. Well, it's in the gray area. Well, it, 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 it could go by the referendum. I've seen them call up and, and look up countless times what's going on. If it's that unclear to you guys, it's even more unclear to us. I think it needs to go to a vote, in my opinion, but that's, that's just my opinion. You're signing us youth up for a lifelong commitment if it doesn't go the way that you expect it to go. Most of you ladies and gentlemen in here are... are older than I am, so you're not going to be around as long as I am, but you're signing my life up for paying for the rest of it. Yeah, I tried not to call you old, but uh, you're signing me up for it, and, and I, don't, I don't really want to pay it, so I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Lisa Johnson, 4001 Ridgemont Drive. Thank you for your service. Um, Metro constituent citizens and taxpayers deserve and need to be served every day by a metro government that is fully functional. The boards and commissions are eager and greedy to grant applications across the county. Uh, we are now bursting at the seams, but other basic services are not sufficiently equipped to support daily needs at this time, nor for future growth. We need teachers, we need bus schools, we need bus drivers, sheriffs, EMTs, fire personnel, police, etc. You know all this. You talk about it every time you're in here. Um, honor the cost of living promised to the Metro employees and provide the necessary equipment to perform their jobs. Um, it's a miracle there was not a massive fire disaster this past weekend. That could have spread to encompass the entire East Bank, even East Nashville, North Nashville, or the city center. We are not prepared. This council needs to stand up and represent the people who put you here and slow Nashville's role. Take care of Nashville first. At most every council meeting, 
the members of this council vote on lawsuits involving the city. Now Metro is condensed. There are towering skyscrapers, skinny houses, quadplexes, and numerous venues throughout the city. It is not prepared to properly protect the people in the neighborhoods, nor in the city. As one of your own colleagues so succinctly said and put it the last past week in this very chamber right here, you are putting the cart before the horse. It's almost now as if the horse of very hungry billionaires, developers and contractors are trying to break away and run over Nashville and run away with our finances. Do not allow this to happen. Nashville needs better finances and financial planning today and for our future. We should not, not be providing funding for a soccer real estate deal. It's pure and simple. Protect the state fairgrounds. The state fairgrounds belong to the people and have for over 100 years. It is not surplus property. Do not treat it as such. I implore you to, to vote against this rezoning. Also, allow us to vote on the fairgrounds resolution. It is only right that you allow us to do that. Thank you. you. Ask for our vote. Allow us. Do not deny us that opportunity. Stand up Thank for you. this Metro Council. Howdy, council members. My name is Jim Jordan. I live at 510 Leanne Drive. Uh, I want to expand on Mr. Dominey's statements for a minute about the fair board and what their job is and was any of these two votes to surplus this property even legal? Uh, the exhibit A was blank. How do, you, how do you approve something with a blank exhibit and fill it in later? That does not appear to Mr. Jameson might speak to that, but that don't appear to be legal. And is, is there even, do they have any business voting to give away property? That's not in their job description as I can see it from the charter. So th those, two, those two points there definitely need to be addressed. Uh, that's really all I got for that. So, you know, I would urge y'all to really think about that. Is, is this even, even legal? And you know where it's going to go. Thank you. <laughs> Alan Cloyd, 3421 Country Hill Road, Antioch, 37013. The last four hours have reminded me of what the most casual student of human history already knows. It reminds me of ancient Rome. The Caesars attempted to keep a crumbling society together by giving them bread and circuses. We are a city of circuses, football circus, baseball circus, hockey circus, and now soccer circus. You cannot build an economy with circuses. Economies are built, wealth is made by mining, manufacturing, and agriculture. Those three things build wealth, and nothing else will build wealth. You can have a poker game and make some money. That's where one person loses and another person gains, and that's exactly what you're putting on Nashville, a soccer poker game. The citizens are going to lose, and a few billionaires will make some more money. Say amen, church. You know it's true. You've helped to, to cradle it and cause it and make it happen. For the last four hours, we've heard newcomers, foreigners, millennials, one after another, stand up here and tell you what they feel and how they love soccer. It's all been emotional. There have been no facts until the last half hour or so, and 
these things were mentioned. Can you even do this? The Reigns family gave the property with that proviso. Ten to six or six to ten days of an agricultural event, the fair. If you don't have that, it's going to go back to the heirs of that family. Can you do this? I don't think you can, but it doesn't matter what I think. In 2011, 73% of the people who voted on this said no. Remember that word. They said no. Thank you. Good evening, Land Tanker. Live at 790 Elysian Fields Road down in Gracious and Growing Oak Hill and District. Where'd he go? There he is. 25. Uh, I am adamantly opposed to this zoning change. Um, the little fairgrounds we have, uh, like you've heard earlier, draws a hundred, uh, excuse me, one and a half million people a year. Uh, the attendees at its flea market, monthly flea market, the vendors that uh, show up at the expo center, the racetrack, even the uh, fair, people come in from adjoining counties, neighboring states, all over the region. They stay in our hotels, they eat in our restaurant, they enjoy time in our bars, they buy uh, merchandise in our stores and buy fuel and gasoline here. The little fairgrounds has a huge economic impact. And what's going to happen with this zoning change, you're going to push the flea market, the expo, affordable expo buildings off the hill, down into a corner, down into 10 or 15 acres. They're not going to survive. So you're going to destroy the economic engine of the little fairgrounds and replace it with huge amount of debt and expectations. Uh, our fairgrounds is not a teardown, it's a fixer-upper. It needs a little help after two decades of neglect and derision by various administrations. It does need some help. Uh, everything in this city does not have to be new and shiny. It doesn't have to be glass and stainless steel. The flea market goers, the expo goers, uh, they like the vibe that it has. So I would ask you to consider this zoning change and to not vote for it and preserve the little engine. It's real simple. The stadium can go somewhere else. Metro's got property all over town. There's any number of places where it could go. And, and the idea I had was maybe the four billionaires could buy themselves some property and have it. I know it's a novel idea, <laughs> but, you know, it, we might ought to try that. Thank y'all for staying late and going through all this, and have a good evening. My name is Daniel Barron. I am speaking on behalf of my grandmother, Mildred Smith, resident of 1912 Bransford Avenue. Uh, we are longtime uh, neighbors and friends of the fairgrounds property. Uh, we have been all there for almost 65 years, proudly in the same location. Uh, on your desks tonight, you have uh, a letter and a packet of surveys. Uh, I conducted a survey among, um, well, I talked to easily over 400 uh, residents of District 17 and collected 366 signatures. Only 13 of those signatures actually support the community plan amendment and rezoning and I encourage you uh, uh, to vote against this. Um, this. There is genuinely little support among the people that I spoke to, uh, and they, no one is afraid of change. Um, in fact, people realize that the property needs TLC, uh, but just not in the manner of 900 apartments, 200 hotel rooms, and combined 300,000 square feet of office space and retail. It's just too much. It's inappropriate. Um, quite tired at this point, so <laughs> um, in your packet, you will also have two maps uh, that show the area in which the opposition is, is located. Uh, it's very, very close to the fairgrounds property. 
Uh, what I've learned, I've learned a lot of things from, from doing this. Uh, it's the, the primary opposition is due to the traffic. Uh, there's already bad traffic in the immediate area on the collector roads that define the neighborhood. The, the, if you stack future traffic from pedestrians, from cars, from bikes, uh, it's really too much for a great number of residents. Um, the, the community is concerned about increase of crime that comes with this type of, of uh, proposed uses. When you have a soccer stadium, uh, you have all these noises, you have uh, drunk fans, you have um, d drug trade that, that follows those types of uh, activities. But um, I've, I've also learned that, that people do not really realize what's coming down the pike and, and the, the quality of communication about this uh, is extremely poor. Um, I cannot tell you the number of people who uh, simply just didn't know. They're genuinely surprised. Out of 366 signatures, I easily had 350 surprised faces when I, I listed uh, the program that's going to be crammed on these 10 acres. Please do not support this. Please take this to, um, to vote. Thank you. Support Cooper and Glover. Thank you. How you guys doing tonight? This, this, this is James Faulkner. Say, hey, buddy. Hi. Hey. He won two championships last year. He's a future racer at Nashville Fairgrounds. I can't pull, hold you up for three minutes, though, so you're going to sit down here, okay? Uh, Trey Faulkner, 2203 Rankin Drive, Nashville business owner. Uh, I want to thank you guys. I can't imagine how uh, your backs might be hurting right now, so uh, I'll make it quick. I want to thank uh, Councilman Glover for all his hard work and common sense on this issue. Uh, I want to talk about the fairgrounds. Uh, this, this land was given to the state for the sole purpose of having a state fair. The private acts of the state were adopted by the Metropolitan Charter when the two became one, and it states clearly. It also states you can make improvements to the property for fair purposes. It also states you can acquire additional property to help enhance the state fair. But nowhere does it state that you can give away the land or lease it for 99 years. If this surplus land that the city says is so valuable is so valuable, then why are we considering giving it away to billionaire developers? This city has given much of our taxpayer dollars away as incentives to outsiders uh, and high interest developers, and apparently they cannot manage their checkbooks or add two plus two, especially with the budget shortfalls. We've got Metro employees who are promised raises, they're not getting them. We have outdated fire equipment, we have a lack of staffing, we have policemen who are now restricted due to funding cuts, which has been mentioned over and over and over. The cutting of overtime pay. But hey, let's honor the developers and build this soccer stadium, which could be built somewhere else. Along with the $4 million a year that we're going to have to pay for, we cannot afford it. Vote against this bill and do the right thing again. It really doesn't make any common sense why we're here talking about this whole thing, because it's already been voted on. Let us not have to remind you, with all due respect, over and over and over again, that the fairgrounds is not for developers. It's not to be split up. It is for the people of this city to be shared with others from everywhere. From a common sense perspective, in, more, in order to make this thing happen, the city must borrow two to three hundred million dollars, and it'll cost more than four million dollars annually to service this debt. Whatever is left over from potential profits will be thrown on the backs of Nashville citizens. I am a Nashville city businessman. I hear over and over and over and over again from Nashville citizens that they're dying from the taxes and then y'all are still broke. It doesn't make any sense. Nashville citizens are already being taxed to death by millions and millions in subsidies to fund a football program, hockey program, or a baseball program that we cannot afford. The bottom line is Nashville can't afford it. I like soccer. I'm not that good at it, but I'm cool with it. I'm not opposed to it. But there's a lot of better places to put it. Number one, the taxpayers can't afford it. Number two, the private acts of the state is clear. The land is only to be enhanced as fairgrounds, never to be sold or given away. 75% of Nashvillians have already voted against this. Five seconds. Number four, the vote for a commercial sports endeavor on Thank the fairgrounds you. is a betrayal of the citizens that voted you into office. Thank, Thank you. you. Madam Vice Mayor, ladies and gentlemen of the council, I know you all know me. My name is Shane Smiley, 4220 Brush Hill Road. 
I am the chairman of the Nashville Flea Markets v Vendors Association. We have over a thousand vendors. And you'll see before you pictures that are on your desk that show the flea market on Saturday, midday, and the place is packed. The footprint that you're suggesting through this mixed use development displaces these vendors that I'm responsible to speak for. It harms their businesses. We've heard about diversity and living wage. Well, come on out to the flea market. You'll see such diversity, blacks, whites, Hispanics, people from, I think we had 37 countries represented at the flea market this weekend. You also have before you, I put a pack in front of you on Tuesday of over 5,000 signatures opposed to this deal. This weekend alone, in two days, we got an additional 2,700. So that's nearly 8,000 signatures opposing this that is before you. But this is about zoning. So let's talk zoning. Nashville Next laid out, which everybody worked on, everybody, a lot of people worked on Nashville Next. There's a portion of Nashville Next that talks about district impact, which they labeled the Speedway as, as a district impact area. And it very clearly states in district impact, if you listen to Nashville Next, that you're not supposed to put permanent housing in a district impact area. That is exactly what they're asking you to do within this rezoning, is to take a district impact area and turn it into housing. It's absolutely forbidden in Nashville Next. So it shouldn't even be a question on if this moves forward or not. Now over the last few years as Nashville's grown, I've heard a lot of you talk about how we want to build in Nashville that's welcoming to everyone. Well, let me tell you, if you like state fairs, flea markets, stock car races, or the fairgrounds in general, you don't feel very welcome in your own city. For many people that are born and bred here, they no longer feel welcome in their own city because of this type of continual coming after this property to redevelop it. The traffic study is out, 28% increase in traffic. Now, just a few years ago, I worked very hard on the muffler program, where we knocked the sound of the race cars down by 16 decibels on the average. Now, 10 decibels to the human ear cuts it in half. But on that day when we got done and we proved that 16 decibels is what we were cutting with the initial program, Colby Sledge, who was then the neighborhood organizer for Neighbors for Progress, said, well, it's really not about the sound. It's more about the impact on the neighborhood from the events and the traffic coming in and out of our neighborhood. And that was his next fight, to stop us and shut us down as a fairgrounds. But suddenly, hey, let's bring everybody. Well, how do you quantify that to where you said, we can't have this because of the events, we, get, we can't have as many races because you do it. Thank you very much. Vote against this. Thank you. I know you guys are worn out. <laughs> And we really appreciate you guys being here this evening. I'm Kathy Hammer. I live at 120 Butley Court, Goodlitzville, Tennessee, in District 10. Um, you know, I've been here all my life. I'm a native Nashvilleian. Um, come from a racing family. My brother has been racing since he was 14 years old. My dad raced. Um, we spent many a weekend at dirt tracks racing. But this is not what it's all about for me. I love racing. I love Nashville. Nashville's not the Nashville I grew up in. And there's always change. But what's going on right now in Nashville is not attractive. What's happening at the fairgrounds is not right. I've tried so hard to look at this from so many different ways. I like soccer. Both of my boys played soccer. My oldest son was very good at soccer. But when you are looking at spending this kind of money, and as you've heard tonight, we are looking at spending almost $300 million on a stadium when our first responders are making poverty level money when we are at a deficit in Metro when we don't have anywhere near the equipment for our firefighters we don't have the people that we need to respond to for 911 
the police are not making the money that they need. It's a joke when we put out that we need to hire police for Nashville. My fiance's son is a policeman in Daytona Beach. He wanted to move here. When he saw the salary, he couldn't believe it. That is so ridiculous for us to be the city that we are. For us to even think about giving away 10 acres of land that first of all, is not ours to give away. I can't understand that. This property was given to the people of the state of Tennessee, Davidson County, to put a state fair on, to keep a state fair at, year after year after year. What happened? How did that get misconstrued? What happened to the referendum of 2011? Do you guys not understand that? I understand that. Is soccer going to save anybody's life? Absolutely not. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Raffaella Cohen, and I live at 117 30th Avenue North, apartment 402 here in Nashville. I am begging you to vote against the rezoning of this 10 acres. This is against the 2011 referendum supported by over 70% of the voters and taxpayers of this county. This administration and the administration of Megan Barry and before her, Carl Dean, who is now running for governor, God forbid, have put you, <laughs> have put you in an untenable position. I am involved in many groups and no one I meet is for this this whole thing, and this giveaway of public land. The previous administrations have allowed, if not encouraged, a lack of maintenance to cause the fairgrounds to deteriorate. There needs to be a referendum. The voters of this county need to say yay or nay. Vote, um, please, please consider the referendum. The citizens and voters and taxpayers who voted on the transit plan and voted for the Titan Stadium need to vote on this. This is as big a deal as the Titan Stadium was. And I am begging you to put this to the voters. Begging you. My name is Paul Pugh. Um, live at 410 Denali Drive. Uh, Holly Guizzo is my neighbor, my friend, and my councilwoman. And I'm, I'm going to talk about something a little bit different. Uh, everybody has been basically saying the same thing over and over. Well, I'm going to put it to you like this. We're voters. We've got power, if we can get the right people behind us, to vote people in and out. This happened in 2011 when we got this man right here elected because Anna Page turned her back on our district. And we got Tony voted in. Well, I, the reason we, that me and my friends and things have talked, it's a big trust issue. And I'm going back to the 70s. They said, we're gonna close Cascade Trust is we're gonna build something better. A few years later, they closed Fair Park. Then they closed our batting cage, and it's just been one thing after another, nothing else coming. They keep taking away, but they don't add anything. And I don't think giving 10 acres away is what we need to do, and I hope y'all vote send us to a referendum. Thank you. Good evening, Rick Williams, 120 Winthorpe Court, Old Hickory, Tennessee. I'm also chairman of Save Our Fairgrounds. I want to quickly go over the history as mentioned earlier. Over a hundred years ago, I mean, people ask me all the time, why are you so passionate about this? You know, I don't get paid for this. This is all nonprofit work. I do it because I'm passionate about the history of Nashville. A hundred years ago, people came together and gave this land with one request, that Nashville always host the Tennessee State Fair. You just heard Scott Jones tonight, the executive director of the fair, say, that there's not going to be enough room to host the state fair. The very reason this land was given, these people, if they'd have kept that land, they'd be multi, multi-millionaires right now. But they cared about Nashville, cared about Davidson County, and cared about having a state fair. So I ask you to honor that 
request they made when they gave this land. That's how we ended up with this land. It's not like we bought it or, or had it uh, some way, any other way. It was given by a family. This is a zoning hearing tonight. So we're talk let's talk about the zoning. Community, uh, the Nashville Next Plan calls for no residential housing on this property. In the, in the plan, please feel free to look at it. It's very important to look at it. We all participated in it. Right tonight, we wouldn't even be voting on this zoning if we were just building a stadium. The stadium would be fine. I had the opportunity to meet with Mr. Reebling about eight months ago. We told him 30-year lease for the stadium, 30-year lease for the track, 30-year 30, 30 lease for the state fair, keep the flea market, we all go home. We, were, we would be fine with a stadium. It's the deal that's involved, the underhanded backroom deal that's all coming to light now. Just today, the traffic study was released, 28% 28, 28 increase in traffic that's going to happen at the fairgrounds area if this is built. 28% increase. I'm sure the neighbors are not happy about that. Last thing I want to say, we have Mr. Ingram, fine family. His mother did a lot for this city, helped us a lot. He's done a lot. The Turners, Steve and Jay, great people. I know them personally. I don't know about Mark Wiff. It's W-I-L-F. Mark and Ziggy Wiff, why don't you Google him tonight? You've got an electronic device in front of you. See about the New Jersey judgment just four years ago for him and his brother. There's adjudicated, they owe their partners $84 million because they, they conspired in civil racketeering for two decades with their partners. Now that's just easily found right now. These are gonna be your partners, folks. Not just Mr. Ingram, not just Mr. Turner and the Turner family, not the Ingram family. You've got Mr. Wiff and his brother Ziggy that own the Minnesota Vikings. Google it for yourself. It's right there. You'll read it. $84 million judgment. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Jamie Taylor. I live at 3424 Harborwood Circle, and I'm in District 13. I'm a proud Metro employee of the Sheriff's Office for 28 years. I'm also a proud supporter of our fairgrounds. As a longtime attendee and supporter of the racetrack, the flea market, Christmas Village, I'm asking you to please support leaving the fairgrounds as they are. Soccer, obviously, has a following in Nashville. You've heard that for over two hours tonight. But what about other places like the old Starwood or the practice, Titans practice area in Metro Center? There are other options. As a Metro employee who didn't get a promised raise this year, and there are so many needs in Metro for our employees in the fire department and the police department, I think there's much better way to spend the money besides giving the land away to developers. I really appreciate your time and consideration in this matter. Thank you again for the opportunity to speak to you and let you know how I strongly feel about this. Good evening, council members. Vice Mayor, appreciate y'all's time tonight. My name is Sharon Melman. I live at 3204 Lakeford Drive in Holly Wazos, District Number 13. My first question to you is, who do you work for? You work for us. We put you in office. Secondly, to expound on what Mr. Dominey spoke to you about, if you vote yes for this zoning resolution please resign your job right now because you have broken your oath to the city of nashville to your constituents because you have not upheld the charter and also you have told your constituents in your district that their vote on the 2011 referendum means nothing. So if you vote yes on this tonight, 
please tomorrow just resign your post because you have completely disregarded your oath of office. Thank you. Good evening, Vice Mayor. Good evening, Council. My name is Tony Timpenny. I live at 3000 Maverick Drive, Nashville, Tennessee. I do see a lot of red eyes out there. I've been right through it with you guys before. Uh, previous council member of 16th District. You know, I, as I look out around you guys tonight and I, and I see what's going on, you know, the first thing I did when I come up tonight, I thought this was a public, public hearing, but I got turned away at the door immediately when I tried to come in and sit down. There were a, a line of a lot of these folks that are wearing red shirts tonight. They were denied access to the council chambers. You know, why, why would you do that? Why would you deny access to people that are in public that want to come in and sit down and hear the public hearing? Why was that done to us tonight? You know, all the media and news people were here earlier tonight, but by the time we got in here, most of them were leaving. You know, you kind of think that we're the bad guys. It's like Major League Soccer and everybody that's for this have tried to, to, to put it on us as the bad people. Well, let me tell you, we're not the bad people. I was born in Nashville, Tennessee. I was born in Woodbine. I've grown up over there. I've watched changes happen. You know, we're about to give 10 acres of land at the fairgrounds. That's private land. This should never, ever come across the desk of the Metro Council. We have a charter to go by. You show me where there's a fair. Well, she's got it turned around now. But if she turn around and let you see it, you show me where there is room for a fair to go there. I'll tell you, nowhere can you find where a fair goes right there. We've asked the director of the fairgrounds. Where is a fair go? You know what she says? It's crickets. She can't tell us. That is 10 acres, y'all. That's about $30 million that were just given to the billionaires. My councilman's shaking his head over there. Really? I wish he would stand up more for the people of the 16th and what's going on in this fairgrounds fight right now. But he's not doing that. I talk to people in my district every day. They're overwhelmingly against this. I go to the restaurants. I go to the events in my district. And I talk to people over there. They are totally against this. I would ask you to please honor the referendum. That's all you have to do. These lawyers, I call it a chicken ways out. But if you just honor what we did in 2011, we wouldn't be having this discussion about this now. Thank, Thank you. you. Ken Joyce, 382 Haywood Lane, Nashville, Tennessee, 60 years old, been born and raised here. I'd like to talk about a couple of things. We currently have an NFL team. We currently have an NHL team. The NFL team has been to the playoffs two or three times and the Super Bowl once. The NHL team has been to the playoffs two or three times and to the Stanley Cup once. As we all know, the NFL is the most sought after sport in the United States. And you know what? Neither of those two programs are contributing enough to this city to pay the obligation that this council and this government approved the, the first responders cost of living raises. And we wanna turn around and put a soccer stadium in at our expense, I'm not sure that's a good idea. The second part, keep up here if you're a math guy. One acre equals 43,560 square feet. If you multiply that times 10, that's 435,600 square feet. If you, multi if you take and take the average space that a booth at the flea market takes, a 10 by 18 booth 
is 180 square feet. That's 2,420 2, booths that a 10 foot, a 10 acre footprint would show, and that's what would be in it. If you multiply that times $100 for the weekend of the booth, that's $242,000 every month of rental that this would take in. If you take that and multiply that times 12 months, it's $2.9 million. We average annually of cost towards the flea market to put that flea market on approximately $70,000. Now, I don't know what y'all's money is, but you tell, show me somebody that's going to give me a return of 2.9 on an investment of 70, sign me up. I'm in. Okay? It's not a big risk. Now, you want to take that and add it to the shortfall that everyone's talked about, that you guys know are happening, the shortfall, that what it's going to cost us to have the MLS, and the shortfall that they're, going to, they're not going to be able to pay us, we're going to be almost $6.2 million dollars if this was what this property was intended for its use to. I strongly advise you, I personally ask you, that this is not what this city needs. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Out of respect for your time and these fine folks who have jobs as well as me, I am the last person to speak. My name is Melissa Smithson. Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Okay. Sorry. Okay. I urge you to vote against rezoning this 10 acres of public land for mixed-use development. I can go on and on for the reasons, and I'm sure you've heard them all tonight. Let me remind you, you allocated $12 million for this property for renovations prior to the MLS proposal. Voting against this tonight and not putting the soccer stadium at the fairgrounds will not keep the fairgrounds from being renovated, unless it was a sham all along. Nashville is already an internationally recognized city, thanks to Brenda Lee, NASCAR, and country music. Giving away public land to developers as a bribe or inducement, whatever you want to call it, is wrong. Not fulfilling the promise, promise of raises to our men and women who serve us is wrong. Ignoring the basic needs of our police and firefighters to keep us safe is wrong. Not listening to your constituents, but listening to developers and special interest groups is wrong. I would not want to be in your shoes on that side of the aisle because I couldn't sleep at night knowing I ignored the wishes of the people instead listened to big money. We do not need to hitch our wagon on this deal. It is not the end all. I've heard that if we don't do this deal, Nashville loses economically in the future. I disagree. How can we lose something we never had? You're being pushed to place this stadium in mixed use at this site. You have over 5,000 acres of land in this city. Put it somewhere else that makes sense. If I was a developer, I wouldn't put it on. This would be the worst place to put it. It will impact the neighborhood. There will be traffic. Bransford Avenue, imagine that. Two lanes. Inadequate parking and basically str strangle out the existing uses, especially the state fair. Remember, this property's main purpose is to raise revenue for a state fair, not developers, not Metro. As a taxpayer, I have invested in the Bridgestone Arena, First Tennessee Park, Nissan Stadium, and many other pie-in-the-sky deals that we have been sold on, but I haven't seen any return on our investment. All I have seen is escalating property costs, high weeds, and potholes, as well as daily murders, small business suffering, and those that made Nashville great move out. Now, I do believe that Nashville has been thriving. It's just been mismanaged and has been glaringly evident in recent years. Remember the tax referendum the people overwhelmingly voted down? There's an opportunity next week to vote on the referendum that Councilman Cooper has and have the voters decide if we can, if we want to spend the 250 million plus on this. I ask you to support us and vote not to give these 10 acres away. Thank you so much for listening to us tonight. Thank you. Yeah, Philip Cruz. I was born and raised in Nashville. Um, I really wasn't going to say anything, but I got in early and listened to both sides of this argument. But I grew up with the fairgrounds 
In fact, when I was three years old, that's how I learned to read. There was a sign that says, you must be this tall to, to ride. <laughs> and, and the next year, it was easier to read, and each year it got better. But I'm for putting in something for children. And when I grew up, we had batting cages. Our baseball teams used to go there during the weekday and, uh, and rent those by the hour. And batting cages would be ideal that down there again. And when the state fair comes back, ask them to leave some of the rides for, for the all next sum, summer. Give, give the kids something to do. And please save the fairgrounds. Sir, are you in line to speak? Okay, if you don't mind, take a seat, please. Thank you. Seeing no one else in the queue, I declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Sled. Thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. So I've got a substitute um, that I need to offer, so I'm going to move this substitute with a brief explanation. The floor is yours. The substitute just incorporates the, um, basically, our transportation folks at planning incorporates all their uh, recommendations slash requirements, and so um, I would ask that we move that substitute. Is there a second? Okay. Having been properly moved and seconded, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Councilman Sledger on your bill is substituted. Okay, on the bill is substituted. I will move as a uh, move as substitute with a brief explanation. <laughs> Floor is yours. Uh, so uh, I appreciate everybody coming out to speak tonight. Um, obviously, this is a bill on second reading. It's minimal on third. Um, I've Heard some good conversation from members throughout uh, tonight. I think we've got a little more work to do, but I think that um, we've got the opportunity to then have our major discussion next Tuesday on the entire plan. So what I would request from members tonight, whether you're yay, nay, or abstain, we go ahead and just take the vote tonight. Um, and then, again, this is amenable on third as a zoning bill. Um, we can have the full conversation on this as we will on the other three pieces of legislation um, on Tuesday. So with that, I run a motion. Thank you, Councilman Glover. Just a couple of quick questions. Um, some things I heard, and Mr. Jameson, I'm going to address these questions to you, please, sir. The 20% affordable housing, I guess, that's been reached uh, with the CBA or however that works, uh, where does that obligation fall and who is obligated to do that? And what say do we have as the governmental body to make sure that's accomplished? So the body, this body attempted some affordable housing legislation. You may remember uh, Bill 133, and that was subsequently um, uh, shot down by uh, essential le legislation from the General Assembly. The affordable housing uh, before you in the CBA is an agreement, a third party agreement between essentially the Nashville Soccer Holdings and Stand Up Nashville, a private agreement between private entities. Uh, Metro was not a party to that agreement. Uh, Metro would not enforce that agreement, but it uh, does not run afoul of state legislation with respect to affordable housing. Those parties can agree and have a binding agreement implementing a 20% affordable housing uh, understanding. Okay, so uh, they can have an understanding. All right, so they get involved uh, n a number of times. You, you start stuff and you, you get started and you get into it and then all of a sudden you find out, well, I can't do quite that that I'd hope to do. Uh, if the 20% is not delivered, then who has the basis for the lawsuit? Uh, again, it would, Metro would not be a party to the CBA, uh, likely could not be a party to the CBA. Uh, any breach of the underlying agreement would be up to stand up Nashville to enforce. Metro would not enforce it. Okay, and let me go to the next. The $15.50 hour wage uh, guarantee that's been given who who's providing that? I mean, is every employer on the fairgrounds has to pay fifteen fifty as a minimum wage? As I understand the the CBA terms, I have not seen the the actual CBA. I saw the letter summarizing it this afternoon. It was fifteen dollars fifty 
uh, for all employers directly hired by Nashville Soccer Holdings. Uh, that is the type of term that under state law, Metro as a municipal entity could not enforce. We are prohibited under the uh, Contractors Act in Tennessee from requiring any sort of uh, provision on contractors beyond what state law requires, and it does not require that minimum wage requirement. But it is allowable between private parties. Again. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, it's happening right now in restaurants and things throughout the city because they realize in order to bring the workers in. What I worry about is when the economy takes a downturn and perhaps that can't be paid. I'm just trying. I, I think it's great that we're we're looking at this, but I think everyone needs to go into this thing with their eyes wide open, uh, understanding that the government is not it's not enforceable by us. And I realize everybody says, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it, I promise. Uh, but we've heard that a number of times, um, and as so have the, the voters. So, um, And then the final piece, the one, the one thing that I, I question greatly, is the Reigns family, with regards to if we, if, the, if for some reason the fair is unable to be performed on this piece of property, are we in jeopardy of that land having to go back to the family? because we have not honored the obligation in which the piece of property was given. I don't believe so. Um, I, I have enormous respect for uh, Mr. Dominey and the charter section he cited, but that has been preempted by state law. Uh, what we're required to do under our charter is to conduct a fair. Now, whether or not it's a state fair or not, that's up to the General Assembly to, decline, to decide if they want to operate a state fair. But the charter required that there simply be a fair, and it specifies the type of activities that a fair must consist of. Whether or not it's state or some sort of fair, that's what would be in compliance with the charter. Okay. And then I'll close with this. Have we ever been wrong on any legal advice we've gotten from I'm, the city? I'm probably wrong twice a day, at least. Okay. So, uh, yeah. All right. Thank you, Chair. Councilman Scott Davis. Twenty-seven votes. Next time, is that correct, Mr. Jamison? Uh, on third and final, twenty-seven. We have issues in this city. We have a minority caucus that's distrusting. We have citizens that are distrusting. But also, we have hope with this CBA. Now, I'm not saying I'm for this or I'm against this, but Nashville, people are fed up for false promises. We've had stuff on the, um, on the books for improvements in District 1 for years. I mean, we have the weeds growing up high everywhere, like the young lady said today. You have police and fire departments that need equipment. Why can't I get bonds to help with schools? Why can't I fulfill the promises for other parts of the districts, you know, like in 1, 2, and 3, well, we promised them sidewalks years and years and years ago. I remember, I grew up in this town. We were supposed to use the money or extra revenue from the, from the base, from the football stadium when the Titans came here. And I'm a Titans fan. To fix some of these issues. But we have a huge problem here. We do not fulfill our promises to our communities. So we have a tough vote here. And I want every member to please forgive me, especially every member from a disadvantaged community. Are we going to continue to let the Democrats take us for granted? Or are we going to rock with this side? Yes, I said it. However, there's hope there. I love Kobe, great guy. Steve Glover is also my friend. Minority caucus, African-American members, my Jewish brothers and sisters, the women of this council, you have a tough choice to make. And it's not gonna get easier, but I'm speaking the truth. 
the only way we know how to do it. And I think all of us from those disadvantaged communities should vote as one, one side or the other. Decide this thing, because they need us. When's the next time they're going to need us? They promise us the world all the time, but they vote against us. They lie to our constituents. They say they're going to place certain people on boards. They never do. Oh, we're not going to tear down your hospital. We're not going to go after that. So we have choices to make here. Which side of the coin we're going to land on? Thank you. And Councilman, if I can correct myself, the 27 votes is on the demolition ordinance 1289, and that'll be on third reading, not the zoning ordinance. Council Lady Bircher. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Just, just for clarity, um, for, for myself, um, council colleagues, and also the, the view and audience, as it relates to the community benefits agreement, that is not formally signed as of right now, correct? That's, that's my understanding. That's your understanding. Um, this is a SP, um, and Attorney Jamison, you alluded to earlier that we do not have the authority um, to enforce um, any language as it relates to the CBA, are we able to, um, again, just for clarity, following in behind Councilman Glover, are we able to amend any of the housing components into the SP, not talking about the wages, not talking about the, the inclusive spaces, the community services, are we able to amend um, any aspect uh, or the, the housing component into the SP so that it's expressively contingent upon uh, this housing requirement? It's my understanding that should the CBA be executed, that is the intent of the sponsor and administration to amend the SP to reference the affordable housing component. I do not know to- Will it be expressly stated? If the sponsor can speak to that. Councilman Select, your pleasure. Sure, and I'll, I'll make sure I'm checking everything right with uh, Council Jamison. So because it is voluntary, because the two parties would be entering into a voluntary third party agreement, um, they would be voluntarily agreeing to do the affordable workforce housing they're setting out to do. Therefore, I believe it would be permissible under state and local law to then write into the SP that they're voluntarily placing the numbers that they've tentatively agreed to. Is that correct? We have implemented that in the past pursuant or subsequent to the General Assembly's actions upon our 133 and acknowledge the uh, ability of private agreements to go forward under zoning legislation. Yeah, so, so it would be my intent to, um, should an agreement be reached to write that voluntary agreement of affordable and workforce housing into the SP, it would be coming to you as a timely filed amendment for third reading. Council Lady Verter. Thank you, Madam President. I understand clearly, so this will be voluntary, which absolutely means no guarantees. Thank you so much. Could I, could I make one quick point Floor to that? Floor uh, If it's written into the SP, even though it's voluntary, Council Jamison, it, it means they're held to as, as the SP, correct? It is a condition of the SP, just like any other condition. Okay, just want to be clear. Councilman Bednay. I wanted to tell a little foreigner story. <laughs> I, uh, I was born in Argentina, a soccer country, and I moved here when I was 30. And I started working in an architectural firm in, in Nashville five years after I moved. I used to live in Ohio. And I didn't play soccer, ever. Uh, I was really bad at it. But when I started um, working at, at this architectural firm, there was this native-born guy, Mike, who actually plays soccer. I was like, how can he play soccer? I mean, I'm the Latino guy. I'm the one that is supposed to be playing soccer. But I learned by hanging out with this guy and going to play soccer with him that there were so many people in Tennessee that love soccer that are not foreigners. They are native-borns who grew up playing soccer, loving this sport. And uh, that's why I knew uh, from the moment I got elected that that was the way to bring people together in Nashville because it was something that spoke to many different people from many different backgrounds. And it was an opportunity, just like I had playing soccer with people from all backgrounds, to create an opportunity for people to experience something that they all like. And we saw that today. I mean, if you look at the people that 
came in support, there were people from all backgrounds, uh, mostly, I think, native-born, that really enjoy this sport. And so I just want to make sure you all understand, perhaps you don't know this because maybe you don't talk to your neighbors or they are ashamed to say that they like soccer or they play it, but most, many people do. This is something that is very popular and people are passionate about it. Uh, so just wanted to make sure you understood that from the point of view of a foreigner that is trying to share with you uh, how important this is to bring people together. Thanks. Thank you. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, call the question, please. There's a motion on the floor to call the question. It's been properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? No. Hand vote. All in favor? Hold your hands up high, please. Okay, put your hands down. Opposed? Okay, motion passes. We're on your bill as substituted. Councilman Kendall. Yes, a point is of it, order. Is it proper to call for the question and vote on why people are still in the queue? Yes. Yes. We can't. Okay, we're going to take a machine vote. Madam Clerk, please open the machines. Oh, is this substitute of Council Lady Lee. Can you use your microphone? I can't hear you. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, will you just state exactly what we are voting on, please? Yes. Let me reread the bill for you. It changes 10.0 acres from IWD to SP zoning for property located at 300 Rains Avenue to permit a mixed use development. And this is as substituted. As substituted. Cancel Henderson. I'm sorry. And it's as substituted. Council Lady Henderson. Thank you, Madam President. Just for clarification, um, this is the second reading public hearing of an SP zoning bill. Third reading will be at our next meeting on September 4th. That is correct. So it's amendable on third. That is correct. That said, we have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and a holiday weekend to get our answers and make any changes to this legislation. Yet this body voted to call the question and not have any discussion? That was the vote. Okay, so third reading will be next Tuesday. It will be September 4th, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Got a point of okay, we're going to. Point of information. Council Lady Johnson. Thank you, Madam Vice Mayor. So, uh, follow up on that question. I just want a clarification because this is a second reading, but third reading, I think Mr. James will refer. Uh, we need. Uh, this bill does not need 27 votes, but I did re recall when we passed resolution uh, back in November, uh, it was stated if those conditions were met. One of the conditions was SP bill to change the zoning. That time it was stated uh, this zoning bill need 27 votes to pass. Since then, all the portion was broken down to a lease agreement and uh, tax uh, and uh, demolition and so forth. So these are uh, all the resolution was broken down to three bills, but it was originally one resolution, but yet uh, this bill needs only majority vote, not 27. Mr. Jameson. Correct, on second reading, you just need a majority of those present and voting. Yes, sir, but a third reading, uh, this zone change bill still needs only majority votes. 21, correct, on third. Thank you. Okay. Machines are open, please.
Madam Clerk, you can close the machine to tally the vote. I'm sorry. Go ahead. 20 in favor, nine against, four abstentions. Okay, motion passes. If there's no other business before the council, is there a motion to adjourn? All in favor? Opposed? We're out of here. Well done. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.org.